guy. Oh my goodness. Welcome, one and all, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Welcome children of all ages, to the Grubcast. We're getting real grubby with it. Ugh, here we are. It's fucking... It's... I'm, Fuck. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Oh, I know exactly what you uh, mean. Welcome, everybody, to the Grubcast. This is episode 15. There we go. God, these notes are so long. <laughs> and, yeah, I have so many fucking notes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Episode 15 of, of the Grubcast. Thank you all for showing up. Before we get into Cascade, oh, because, oh boy, it's going to be a long one. we got a lot to talk about with Cascade. But Fucking crazy. Let's say you want to talk to some other cool homestucks, including us. You, yeah. you can join our Discord in server. The Discord? It's oh, linked down oh. in the description. Yeah, That'd be pretty bro. cool. You can do that. There's a bunch of like cool nerds in there that love talking about homestucks. Oh, so if but you're what cool if nerd... you want to be cooler than all those other nerds? Well, oh, you can yeah. accomplish that by giving us money. Whoa, it's yeah, that easy? It's that easy. Uh, <laughs> by joining our Patreon, also linked down in the description. On the $3 tier, you get an awesome, sick mm-hmm. Discord roll. And on the $5 tier, you'll get an even cooler Discord roll, as well as the access to all the art for the episodes, including this week's lovely Cascade artwork. Ooh, look at it. It looks really fucking good. It's so sick. Enough for you to pay us $5 a month. Thank you to all of our $3 yeah. patrons. Which includes? No one. Nobody. Zero people are giving us $3 because Every single one of our patrons is now a five dollar patron. Has ascended to the five dollar patron yes, level. Sir. Thank you so much to our five dollar patrons: Lizard King, Changeable Landscape, mm-hmm. Ada, Blue Liz, Toby, Class Picked Expert, My Homestuck Dante, my homestuck. and Mia Bowman. Thank yes. you all so much for giving us money, Thank which you. we can then put back into the show to do a cool project <laughs> that we're working on. Yes. Appreciate <laughs> it. Fuck yes, we have fan art. Yeah, we have fan. Art. I love when our fans get a scribbling. And let's start with the most impressive one. Okay. Uh, Sweet E and Hella Momo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This was drawn by Sunny Flower in the Discord <laughs> server. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sunny has recreated oh, the famous Stairs comic. Oh, God. With, with, with yours truly. <laughs> I love it. I can't wait. To, it's so hard to read it's the text. It's so hard to read. It's even better. That makes it perfect. I can't wait to be a useless piece of shit all day and record yeah. Grubcast episode. <laughs> Fuck, I'm falling down oh, all no. these stairs. <laughs> oh, it's so good. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Sunny flower for this. Yes. It's beautiful. I want to get it framed. I, love it. <laughs> I need to get this printed out and framed and hung yes. on my wall. Sweet E and Hella Momo is a beautiful achievement. Second <laughs> off, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Blue Liz, in the Discord server for Pope Scratch. The Pope himself. <laughs> of course. I'm the Pope. Of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There oh, he is. Man. Pope Scratch. I, part of what I love about it is that it's just like an edit of a panel. Yeah, like they just like, drew on the Pope drew over, it. over like the panel of the comic. <laughs> it's fucking perfect. I love it so much. But it feels natural. I believe he'd say exactly that. If Absolutely. He were if you were the Pope, this is what Doc Scratch would say. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, man. It's good because... You, what like the outlines on his on his clothes are different yeah <laughs> so it's just it really sells the fact that he's the pope and you will not question his authority yeah, from bro. god english this, this is divine garments and that's why they have a different <laughs> eye outline <laughs> oh my god thank you very much blue Liz, the discord server and not one not two but three drawings from Scrub Lord of Kirby characters as <laughs> as fan trolls as requested. I really went fucking above and beyond the Call of Duty. Oh, First man. off, Kirby. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's adorable. It's so good. It's just a Kirby. It's just Kirby with horns, <laughs> which is already great. And then here's actual Kirby. <laughs> Look at. I, I love Why him. Why is so good? It's so cute. Oh my god. He's got a big cake. <laughs> oh my god, he's adorable. And there's Meta Knight just there, which also oh. fucking sick drawing yeah, of Meta Knight. Man, I don't think Meta Knight's gracious. a troll here. It's just a cool ass drawing of Meta yeah, Knight. No, it looks fucking <laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, and no. then, did you not have enough Meta Knight? Here's Meta Knight troll. <laughs> 
There it fucking is. It, oh it, my god. Or no, that's wait, fuck, no, is that's mirror. That's mirror person. Yeah. It's not Meta Knight. Fuck, I don't know my current Thief of shit. space. Oh, oh bro. it's so good. <laughs> Look at oh my god. You know, this is amazing artwork. My it's man. so it's all great. Thank you so much from Scrub Lord at Morality Calls on Twitter for Scrub Lord. Go follow yes, them. Go follow Give them. Look at what they do. It's so sick. Support them. Hey. Doc Scratch that they did from the first episode is still in my phone background. <laughs> it's fucking great. Thank you so much to everybody who gave us fan art. Thank you to yes, everyone who's giving us money. It. We love that. Too. <sighs> it's time for some cascade. Oh, by which I mean, it. it's time for that in a long time because we have a lot of shit to talk about. <laughs> we got to cover get everything there. else prior, but <laughs> oh boy! All right, and and then at the end, we're going to watch uh, Intermission Two together, so it's gonna be pretty fucking cool. <laughs> okay. Immediately, we have three juggling storylines to deal with. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> three things are happening at once on every page. Something light to, you know, handle it. <laughs> so, you want to deal with the header image or the main panels or the pestle logs first? Hmm. You can go in any order you want. I'm thinking main panels. All right. Main thing we're doing in these panels is the dog scratcher said, Stop making out with the queen. <laughs> It's not, that's lame that's not as why fuck. I have you here. <laughs> and if you remember way back when, he was like, I'll beat you up later. Now is later. Now is later, and Kicks he is the... beating him up. <laughs> oh my god, he destroys his shit. Effortlessly, too. It's so... Yeah, he just goes... No, die. Also, gun is for you. It's for you. You gotta, you gotta I, fucking I kill that you bitch, to kiss her. <laughs> You have to fucking kill Snowman. And then immediately everything makes sense. Yeah. It's like, ah. Oh, you're trying to bring about the end of the universe. He needs the end of the universe to happen so he can cause English. Mm -hmm. It's like, there you go. That's the plan. It's like, you gave her this power with intents to kill with, her later. Exactly. So that it'd be easy to destroy all of causality. I 100%. Agree. Now, uh, in the header image, this is mostly just uh, Dave and Jade are fighting Jack, and they have a big fight, and it's cool. But eventually, uh, Dave fucking dies. Yeah, man. Jay shot him right in the jack. <laughs> yeah. Jay was shooting a jack, and Jack just teleported all the bullets into Dave, and Dave's fucking dead now. It was, it was so smooth. I was like, it oh, was God. It was so smooth. Yeah, it was <laughs> fucked up. Um, but it's okay, because she kissed him, and now he's a dream now himself. He's dream him. Which is fine, but also not fine. Yeah, it's bad, because that... It fucks that with the plan a little would bit. Would mess things up. <laughs> fucks with the plan. Now that Rose and him are dead and only have their dream cells as backups, then we have this idea. Oh fuck! <laughs> Someone's it got is a now suicide mathematically mission. impossible for everyone to survive this. Mm. That's not okay. <laughs> no Someone needs to suicide. Ugh. A big theme we're gonna see with this reading section is that the last fucking four thousand pages have all been build up, build up, mm -hmm. build up. And now, like, not just in Cascade, this entire reading section is just fucking payoffs. Mm -hmm. Just the whole time. It's fucking scary. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Everything is finally coming to fruition, and we're really getting to see things. All the dominoes have finally fallen over, and we're going yeah. to see all the destruction they leave in their giant domino wake. Yes, it is bloody. In the Pesterlogs, this is a... This is a pretty big combo. John's trying to, like, talk to Vriska. Being like, hey, Vriska, I read your messages. I would also, that seems fun. Let's go <laughs> on a date. So cool. And then Carcat's like, fuck. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, bro, this is extremely awkward and sad. Shit. <laughs> and then he asks the very important question of, like, did you actually like her? And John comes to the conclusion, well, yeah. Yeah. I've... Yeah, I think I did. And then Carcat's like, sick. So, that means I'm not going to tell you anything because I need, information. <laughs> I need you to have a clear head because we're coming up to the fucked up shit. And <laughs> and, I need you to be focused. And don't, uh, personally, like, from the aspect of, like, if I were the character in the story, I hate the idea of people keeping knowledge from me for my own betterment. But I do feel like ultimately this is probably the this best is move. Definitely the best move. Carcat is making the right call here. Like, oh man, you're gonna get real emotional and sad if I start telling you about this. Let's not get into it. <laughs> because like if any one facet of the plan fails, then they're all fucked. Mm -hmm. So like if John's like too emotional and like not able to like complete the scratch right, mm -hmm. then like they're all fucked. They're all just gonna This is bad. A big die. <laughs> so because like if John doesn't do the scratch, then there's nowhere for them to escape too. Mm -hmm. Right? So it was, no, we all gotta be on our fucking shit. I'll tell you later. <laughs> we'll cover it later. Don't, don't worry about it. 
Oh, I feel like it bad for Carcat in this conversation. Yeah, man. Because you can tell in like all of his dialogue that he is so clearly like fucked. Yeah. He's hurting really bad, and he just has to make himself not worry about that right now. Because we're down to the wire, and we, I just have to like try my best to hold everything together and make sure the people that are left can survive and I can grieve later. Mm-hmm. But that's fucking difficult. That that's is hard. It's really difficult to put aside. In the conversation, he's constantly uh, referencing uh, lines that are the characters that are dead are known to say. Yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> at, a, at this point in the comic, he's speaking of Gamzees in a past tense. So I assume that he is dead. <laughs> they have, he had to murder him and had to... Uh, like move forward without him it's just like all right well i had to deal with gamzies anyway he was my best friend don't think about it i'm really beat up about it and don't want to talk about it right now <laughs> as as we see later you know gamzies not dead yeah so i i, I think more in this conversation it's more in like a, a symbolic sense my friend gamzie is dead and mm. has been replaced by whatever the fuck whatever this thing is the heck is going on here yeah but uh, he'll say things like, uh, like, like it was a motherfucking joke. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just, oh, man. It's just him holding on to these, like, old memories of friends. It's, it's so, just so sad. It's fucking sad. Um, one long and windy journey later. <laughs> yeah, one long and windy journey later. We're, we're kind of catching up with the Dave Jade situation, which we just talked about. Uh, Dave and Jade, uh, Jade revives Dave. Dave meets up with Rose, and they're both their dream selves on Durst. And one of them's going to have to blow up the green sun and and die <laughs> oh no yeah and have to die and uh what was it also jack is just kind of like loitering and hanging around jade <laughs> yeah like, he's just chilling he's just kind of following her around he's just vibing he's like i my next step would be kill her but i can't bring myself i to can't because i i she's i'm like a doggy and i and i want to i want pets and i want to play fetch mm-hmm. um shit <laughs> Clubs dudes, kill her ass. Oh, dude, get him. <laughs> That's what we saw before. Yeah. And, oh, fucking boy. He's going to have a triumphant moment later. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, just, uh, I want to say it now. We said it like a little before, but, um, at, and while this, uh, Jade, during the, uh, Jade and, uh, Dave versus Jack fight, they do a frame motif of, a uh, Adagio Redshift. I'm bringing it up now so that hopefully the fans can like give me stuff in the comments about it. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, you seem pretty certain that there's just no explaining what this is, and then I gotta really get into depth with it other than just like team up, go. Yeah, and it's, it's like a, a bit power of a spoiler. Move. Like they get used again later, but like okay. I, I'm just gonna be brutally honest with you. Like no, frame motifs like don't get touched on. Any- like it's just. Eh. They were gonna be explained, I assume, but like they they've just kind of like fallen by the wayside. We're yeah. doing bigger shit. They got like, bigger stuff to. F- yeah, yeah. At, at this point, like the individual mechanics of the game are, as we've seen, just like becoming less and less relevant at mm. all. <laughs> yeah, especially with how far like detached they are from the way the game is yeah, supposed, to, it's be supposed going. to happen. So yeah, like that is a spoiler, but I also don't want you like sitting here waiting for like the frame motif explanation. Do I, do I want a, for another four thousand pages. I want a uh, troll quadrant uh, panel, <laughs> but on frame motifs. <laughs> oh, fuck. Plan is Jade in the future is going to get the needles from her denizen, mm-hmm. and she's going to hand those to John, and he's going to have Rose's needle kind specimens, and he's going to enlarge the needles with the bunny rabbit, and he's going to do the scratch. That's the plan. <laughs> Now, here's a fun little detail that I don't know if you caught. The plan revolves around some really baffling hand-wavy mumbo-jumbo, which I don't really understand. But she told me to trust her about it because the info comes from a reliable informant, whitened for smug tool, that's Dog Scratch. Mm -hmm. It involves something to do with a yellow lawn ring, which isn't the human word for it, it's just your word is so dumb I feel dumb just saying it. That's what Carcat says. A, A what? A lawn ring. A lawn ring. Do you know what a lawn ring is? The answer is probably no. <laughs> no, I can't think of what that would be the Earth equivalent of. Page 2,673, Vriska is talking about John's computer, which has been thrown out his window mm. and is laying in his yard. Yeah. Quote, isn't your computer smashed out on your lawn ring? The- Jade is referring to the to the one yard. She is aware oh. of Hussey's yard of influence. Oh, okay. 
it's a small detail that is easy to fucking mix. Yeah. Miss, but it is there. That's wow. That's crazy. <laughs> so, what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, they literally say, quote, like, they will leave the session by traveling through the lawn ring. So something about Hussey's yard mm -hmm. is going to be what allows them to travel to the new session. Yeah, it'll make an opening for him just enough. Which is obviously what he was referring to in the Sweet Bro and Hella Jeff comic yeah. last episode. One yard. <laughs> John really sucks at being a god tier. <laughs> That's the other thing I have in this conversation. <laughs> yeah, so, like, I need, I think I have it written down. Let me check real quick. I need uh, John to get serious, like, yesterday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, John's like, well, I'm, like, immortal. What if I go, what if and, I go gets... and do this super courageous thing? Let's <laughs> go get you dumb fuck if you're being such a hero that you're gonna die. That's the thing. You're not immortal if you be a hero if about you're... it. Stop being such a cool guy, John, you fuck. <laughs> Stop being so perfectly made for this job. <laughs> you're right. You, you've already mentioned this. It is hard confirmed in this conversation, finally, that Jack cannot bring himself to, like, do anything to Jade directly. Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of, like, soft concerned with him before, but, like, it's just hard confirmed at this point. Like, no, he can't do shit. Yeah. So, other thing in this, in this conversation, they're talking about the plan they have to meet up with the trolls. Did you catch that? Oh, yeah. The uh, plan to meet up with the trolls of, uh... Yeah, they still haven't explained anything yet. He's still having to be super vague with John about it. They've, they've explained it in this conversation. Really? Yeah. Uh, they're going to meet up, and it's that the explosion from the tumor is so huge, which, keep in mind, it is supposed to blow up the entire green sun, mm -hmm. which is twice the mass of our universe. So it, the explosion is so big, it will act as like a beacon that will be visible even to other sessions. Yeah. So then they will pilot the meteor through the furthest ring to meet up to, to essentially come come to them by using the the beacon of the tumor mm, as like a as like a waypoint yeah go there that's 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 what they're gonna do the so they're all gonna leave this session and they're all going to join the new session by traveling through the lawn ring yeah whatever the fuck that, that could means. be <laughs> that's the plan shit <laughs> Uh, at this point, I think it's the um, all the insane scrapbook clippings everywhere. Mm -hmm. the, the feel feel free to examine the clippings while I tidy. So, up until sloppy makeouts, now we can go through these in whatever order you would like. All right, we got a bunch of options. We have J. We have Jasper Sprite and Apetta. We have a past. We have um, Dave and Rose. We yeah. have Jade Sprite and Dave Sprite. We have shit going on on like the purple ship. We have Nana Sprite. And Jade and Carcat, and a very brief stint with Gamzee and Tavros, and the shit that's <laughs> happening in the header bar, and Aradia and Solux, and Dead, Verska and John. <laughs> so we have a lot of options here. We could go through this in any order you want. Oh my god. Right. The, the allure of the choice here is so, it's, it's so beautiful. Uh, my, uh, let's, let's start with uh, potentially dead or dreaming Rose and Dave. Good choice. All right. Weird conversation. Very weird. I uh, don't like... <laughs> I get why they're doing it to kind of build suspense and uh, lead us towards finding out or, uh, or what actually happened and also giving us our own chance to guess. But, <laughs> man, I would be really upset to be in Dave's shoes and be like, bro, can you, like, stop fucking... <laughs> stop being so cryptic. Stop Just tell so me vague. what the fuck's going on. You obviously know what's happening. Tell me. <laughs> yes. Am I dead? <laughs> so Dave is... Is, is like past Dave from like before the comic. Mm -hmm. And he has a dream. And this dream is about him like getting repeatedly killed by like crows and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Which I have to assume He's is like, like in some maze. related to Jack, but I'm going to be honest, no fucking clue. It kind of seems more just like on like the cyclical nature of his uh, aspect. Kind of just like, oh, you have to constantly be going through all these deaths. And also that you're totally sure possible. And uh, you'll have this, like, bird's eye view of it the, all because you're the, the god. The crows are very clearly Jack. Uh, have something to do with Jack. Because he's, you know, the, the, the bird. Dave is responsible yeah. for the bird being prototyped, giving mm -hmm. Jack the wings or anything. Um, and Jack is kind of, at least before, like, the dog shit, Jack's kind of, like, crow-related, crow like, imagery and everything. Mm -hmm. So, it's probably both of those to some extent. Mm. Uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, no. I don't I'll, I'll leave the uh, dream analysis to Rose. <laughs> yeah, she can she can do some weird psychotherapy shit. Oh, and in in the dream, the other thing that I wanted to point out in the dream, he refers to like 
like a call to the sky. Yeah. Which I feel like is pretty obviously like the need to go into the furthest ring. Okay. Yeah. Uh, to blow up the green sun. So you know, there's 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 like some parallels here, but it's just kind of uncool. It's just kind of like general. Wave your hands in yeah. front of the. What does it all mean? What does it all mean? Ooh. It's all has. It's got so much symbolism. It could mean anything, oh right? Oh my god! <laughs> and you're like, yeah, it kind of could. It kind of could. I honestly. <laughs> yeah. Shut up, Freud. You piece of shit. I hate Sigmund Freud. What a bastard. <laughs> and that's basically the end of that one, I think. Oh no, no, no! Or... There's a lot because we're going through all of them at once. Oh, I mean, uh, of that one. That one section, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you know, they they keep going. Like, oh, I mean, yeah, I mean like, like let's let's do all the like Rose Dave shit oh, at once, I and then we'll do all the you know that's what I mean when I there's all these different storylines from the scrapbook, and I say like fuck it, let's just go through each storyline in their entirety. Now I'm caught up. They're in the dream bubbles. Yeah, yeah, they're in the. It's dream just kind of like revealed, like oh, at this point they're in the dream bubbles. Let's figure out if you're dreaming or dead. <laughs> yeah, uh, remember uh, this? Why'd you do it? And uh, it seems as though. Uh, Rose is like almost making parallels to the way that Dave feels about uh, predetermination. Like he'll see a future version of himself do a thing and feel compelled that, oh, okay, well, I must do that at some point. But uh, is it from a place of uh, want or obligation? Like, yeah, there's a lot of that discussion in general. And it's kind of similar to it's kind of similar to the choice she's making right now. Spoilers: she's not she's the one driving. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but um. Yeah, it, it kind of parallels to, oh, well, I was supposed to be the one to do this, so if that's the reason you're willing to risk your life, I'm also valid in risking mine for this exact same reason. Exactly. It's kind of like justifying her own actions, because it mm. is revealed over the course of this conversation that uh, they basically argued a shit ton about who had to go and die now mm. that like both their extra lives are used up. Yeah. Um, and Rose just knocks him the fuck out. With a ball of is, yarn. Yeah, with a ball of yarn. <laughs> she must have really been throwing that thing, man. Yeah, she must have fucking just beamed him with it. Uh, and is now in the furthest ring. So she's not asleep or dead. She's physically in the dream bubble. Yeah, she flew through it yeah. all the way there. And uh, Dave is asleep on Durst. D- shit. From the moment he finds that out, he is immediately pissed. He, he's fuck. He's so fucking mad. He is like, "No, you fucking uh, you stole the big man's thunder. <laughs> you took my suicide mission, and I don't want to lose any friends. I'm willing to sacrifice myself. I do not want to lose anybody that I care about." Lucky for him, Diamonds Droog is there. Yeah, and kills him. And kills him so, so fast. He wakes up. He wakes up, and he's like, oh, "Fuck you! I'm just, fuck, I'm fuck gonna, you! I'm gonna fuck that guy up." Gonna, yeah. <laughs> I gotta, right I gotta over. help you out with the diamonds, Drew, because he's strong as hell. Yeah. Reminder about that. <laughs> so there he goes. He wakes up. He's flying after him. <laughs> Who's this douche dag? I mean douchebag. He's got me stuttering. I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's the. We can just go through. We can alternate. I want to talk about. What's going on with Nana Sprite? <laughs> Nana Sprite. I really was hype about this one. This was such a hype fucking moment. Because <laughs> I don't give a shit about any of the lore that's revealed here. Fuck all of that. <laughs> the most important thing in the entire comic happens in this section. Fedora which is Freak. that Fedora Freak <laughs> reaches God tier. Like, what? <laughs> Holy shit. I thought that was the craziest shit. It was the coolest thing you've ever seen, right? <laughs> yeah. I, Literally, uh... fuck Cascade. I want Fedora Freak. <laughs> I want a Fedora Freak. MSPFA. I want to see Fedora Freak session. Oh, come man. on! It'd be shorter, but man, it'd be good. <laughs> it'd be so gr- Why would it be shorter, bro? Fedora Freak's gonna fucking slay. Well, it seems like he spends most of his time, uh, like from the text we get from him in the background, it seems like he spends a lot of his time really concerned about his drip and the like aesthetic appeal. He's like, oh man, all my clothes are wrinkled. What am I gonna do? Oh wait, I can alchemize clothes that are perfectly pressed. Perfect. Okay, cool. And then he starts fucking with shit, and he's like, oh, big pants. I can't do anything with these. Yeah, do you not want to see that in in, in glorious detail? I, I want would, to. I would love to. I Absolutely. just think it would be short. Like, what is he... I want, how stylish does his god-tier outfit look? Oh, my God. It's got to be so fucking he's, stylish. His god-tier... Honestly, he's probably, like, has a new, cl- like a new class spec, the uh, tailor of drip. <laughs> <laughs> The new fan art, go, 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 go. Taylor of Drip, Taylor of Fedora Drip. Freak, God I need to see it. Come on, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I will gorge myself on the creativity of our fan base <laughs> quickly. 
<laughs> uh, I guess there's like lore and shit in this one too. Um, oh yeah, he uh, Nana Sprite goes and tells him a story. Yeah, Nana Sprite's talking about her childhood, which we saw parts of at some point. I forgot when. Yeah, some with point. Yeah. with Hallie. Yeah, so there's Betty Crocker. So there's Betty Crocker. Mm-hmm. Betty Crocker is not human. Not human, which we know from this section. Mm-hmm. So there's Betty Crocker, and then she gets from the meteors. Grandpa, Harley, and Nana. You kill a uh, colonel on their entry? Yes. Okay. I think. I think that's how it went. I think that's how it goes. And so then they're chilling, and then Betty Crocker's mean and bad. Yeah. Says, fucking bake cakes, losers. <laughs> bake cakes. Don't hang out. And Grandpa Harley says, I don't want to bake any fucking cakes. I'm going to leave with my dog. And then he does. He goes on wild he adventures. He gets the fuck out becomes an entrepreneur it's incredible he's making so many awesome inventions i guess and (laughs) so now she's just being even more mean to nana and nana's getting ready all her fucking espionage and it's i'm gonna take over and then betty crocker fucks off and leaves just just disappears completely without a trace no idea but uh Nana's, Nana's pretty hype about it. Yeah, Nana's fine. Nana's like, you know what? I'm okay with this. Like, I don't, I didn't like her. I didn't and like her anyway. I didn't want the business anyway. I didn't want the business anyway. I just want to live my own life with with someone, and then they have a dad bird. They have a single dad bird, and it's great, and they're good for her. And but uh, they talk about in the section that uh, they were destined for something else. Like a uh, grandma and Nana, grandpa and Nana were supposed to be together and have a kid. Yeah, she wonders like, ah, oh, what what possibilities could there be in like another life, when where 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 this wasn't a, a problem for us and we yeah. could have figured our shit out and then we were destined to be together. I wonder, I wonder what could happen there. Mm-hmm. So, stay tuned for for a, a little bit from now. <laughs> there we go. And and oh god, I'm so happy for Dora Free God Deard, bro. It's so cool. yeah, I, it's so I, fucking hype. I was really, I was sitting there, and I was like, oh man, for Dora Freak, we're gonna watch him die. That's sad. And no, then saw, he's like, I call. I, I, he's like, oh, this slab, it's got weird iconography on it. Whatever. Fucking let's like, go! Whoa! Oh my god! <laughs> so is he gonna be a god? The <laughs> Dora Freak will live forever. Oh man! Like how we're so much more hyped about Fedora Freak than like whatever the fuck's going like, on with like yeah, Nana. That lore stuff's important. It's whatever. important, but like, come on, Fedora Freak though. Yeah. <laughs> so I want you thinking. I want you thinking about who Betty Crocker could be because uh, yeah. uh, near the end, there's a little detail. There's a little detail at the end that might make okay. it. Because I I know who she is. Yeah, yeah. You know, I have the power of future sight. I'm a real seer <laughs> seer of time over here. Um, but but you can figure it out in this section. Uh, your pick. Which one do you want to do next? Which one next? Um, we've done Rose and Dave, and now Nana. Uh, well, let's cover the worst wrap off in Paradox Space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, that's mostly just what it is. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like I think it's just. I really encapsulated all of it in that one sentence. <laughs> that's what I wrote. That's literally what I wrote down as well. It was Games of Taverns, and I just wrote down this is the greatest wrap off in the history of Paradox Space. And they are spitting and. Uh, when I was going through it, I was like, man, I miss sweet, fun Gamzee so much. I know. So motherfucking much, man. Oh, he's your favorite boy. <laughs> I, was, I was so glad to get, like, a little glimpse into the past of, like, oh, uh, remember when Gamzee was chill and not on a murder train page? But, uh, no, I don't remember that. It's only, <laughs> it's only murder Gamzee that's left. Uh, what do I want to do? What do I want to pick? I want to pick, um... Jasper, Sprite, and N- Nepta, just because it's this cute. Is, this is a cute one. It's just a cute little it's thing. It's adorable. I, th- I think this is um Nepta, like, before she died. Mm-hmm. Like, talking to, you know, Jasper's, like, right before the fucking universe ends, basically. Yeah. And it's just like, man, sorry, Jasper, Sprite. Uh, uh, like, bro, uh, like, yeah, I bet you would have got so much cat if uh, you would have... <laughs> <laughs> If you would have, if there would have been cats around, I bet you would have got all of them, bro. And yeah. he was like, "Oh, that's real sweet." And well. it's just, it's just kind of nice. It's clear that like Nepta's talking to her because it like reminds her of her Lessus, who like yeah. fucking died in a cave in or whatever. <laughs> and she mentions pounce uh, in the yeah. in the discussion, and it's just, it's just honestly like, just man, real sweet. Like, fuck, just, it's aw. just a sweet little section. Also implied that Nepta had a crush on Carcat. Yeah, yeah. 
which we'll, we'll get into a little bit later. We start talking about some signless fellow. I don't know. We'll get to that. Don't worry. We'll get to that. Oh, that was a cool one. It's such a fucking cool story. Oh, we gotta pull ourselves off. That's a nice lot story. of this section is just like lore, mm-hmm. which uh, I'm down for. Uh, while well, uh, right after the Nana Sprite uh, ish, <laughs> all I have for the Nana Sprite section is Nana Sprite. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> But because uh, uh, it opens with her grabbing, uh, I think grabbing dad's like hat. dad's hat, yeah. And they're like, oh, like man, it's just like fuck. Why did you have to kill dad, bro? You bitch. <laughs> but um, oh yeah, uh, Doc Scratch offers us a bunch of forward commands, and I was like, oh, thanks. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was so helpful. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I it. <laughs> uh, he's very, good. he's very excellent host. Uh, uh, yeah. Your pick of the sections after um, Jasper Sprite on the uh, on the ship with a uh, Captain Lip Tyler. Ooh, yes. Uh, we start off with uh, all the gang kind of hanging out, and then Club's Deuce starts getting real sneaky with his fingers and does a masterful pickpocket. It was incredible. On the I was so proud of him. Very oblivious uh, mayor. <laughs> <laughs> and Lip Tyler's like, what the heck? Stop! But she can't talk. What so the she's fuck just are like... you doing? She's trying to wave around, but WV is a responsible driver. He looks only out the window while he drives and, <laughs> and nowhere else. <laughs> and then uh, they do a chase scene through the ship. He's beautiful. Uh, Liv Tyler pulls an even better pickpocket on Club's Deuce. Oh my god. That, like, I'll fuck you, show you how it's done, it's like, asshole. Right. <laughs> he just takes the fucking wallet and then like takes the tumor out of the wallet and puts it back in. Mm-hmm. So Club's Deuce still has a wonderful sense of accomplishment. Uh, and Club's Deuce reports to Jack and he's like, uh, yo, I got the wallet got, with the tumor in it. And Jack's like, it. what the fuck? <laughs> what? That wasn't even your I, mission. What are you talking about? That wasn't even the last mission I gave you. <laughs> yeah, no one has ever told you to do this. Why did you do this? <laughs> I, I, the only thing I can think is that he thought the ring was going to be in there, but Mayor kept it like on his person and not in the wallet. I, I guess that's possible. But like, honestly, that may be giving Club's Deuce too much credit. Yeah, uh, Club's Deuce, I think... <laughs> She's supposed to like mixed up a bunch uh, of shit. I'm I'm supposed to take something from somebody. He has the thing. And then Jack's like, "You you dumb bitch! You were supposed to kill supposed to Jade. Kill Jade, that was your mission. Why? What did you do? How did you get here? <laughs> How did you get here? What is your problem? He just starts and wolfing so at him. Jack just teleports in. He's like, "I'll fucking uh, blows up the entire ship." <laughs> I thought that shit was wild. So uh, when Jack first pops up on the ship and him and the mayor make eye contact, I'm like, oh, shit, this is going to be the moment from his dream. The mayor's going to put on his ring and they're going to have an epic battle and just duke it out. No, No. not at all. (laughs) Absolutely not. (laughs) Jack looks at him and then blows the ship up. He blows up the (laughs) ship. Um, and then Liv manages to, like, escape on another, like, tiny ship. But the half of the ship with... WV in it gets blown into one of the sky and defense portals from yeah. the reckoning and spits him out in the future, which is how he gets there for all the future shit. Yeah. <laughs> there there we go. Uh what's my pick? What am I gonna pick? We got Ooh, J Date. Hmm? I wanna save Vriska and John for the end of this before we move on. Yeah. Cause Vriska's the most important character in all stuck. <laughs> uh let's talk about Roddy and Solux, who oh, are boy. chilling. That's most of what they're doing. Yeah, just, just kind of real quick. It's just kind of established. The they are sun. chilling next to the green sun. And the entire reason they're chilling next to the green sun is that they're just kind of waiting. They said they're waiting for Dave and Rose to get there to blow mm-hmm. it up. And then they're going to wait for everyone else because everyone else is going to get there later. Uh, why is Solux dead? Solux is dead? Uh, his eyes are white. Oh, wait, no, because he's blind. Never mind. So yeah. I guess he's just dreaming. Fuck, I don't okay, know. I was like, what? <laughs> when did that happen? <laughs> I was confused on that. No, Solux isn't dead. What the fuck am I saying? Because I, I was confused. I was like, I do not remember Solux, like, dying. Oh, like, God. what the fuck happened? <laughs> but, no, okay, I guess he's just dreaming. I'm an idiot. Okay. Uh, I'm glad he's not dead. I, I am too. <laughs> he's, he, I didn't like, I thought, I felt neutral about him at first, and he's grown on me since. They've, they all grow on you. All Honestly, the trolls are yeah, so good. Every single troll I've met, I was like either awesome or eh, and now I like all now of them. You, they're just they're all <laughs> so good. So now they're just chilling for the others to get there. Chilling, waiting for them. Yeah, that's really about it, I think. Who um, do we have left? We have shit going on in the header bar. I do. Jade notice, and Carcat uh, have a conversation. What is it? Um. Uh, well, the next one I'm gonna pick is the uh, Jade Sprite as well. Yeah, Jade Sprite's interesting. Uh, the next one I'm gonna pick is probably a uh, Dave and uh, Gamzies. I don't know if that's before. That is um. Is that after. That is later. Okay, okay. Uh, we can't then, do that yet. Then Jade Sprite is gonna be my next pick. But before right. that, uh, I think around the end of uh, the Aradia Solux storyline, Solux his eyes are now he's got the duality back, but now instead of uh, red and blue, it's black and white. Yeah, 
And I don't, how'd that happen? I don't know what that means or how that affects him. But I, don't I think know. he's got his powers back. Maybe because Be? belief, maybe like acceptance. I mean, he never lost something. his powers. He just lost the um, like ability to hear the voices of the dead. But oh. he's never lost his psychic powers. He's oh, still got okay. Them. I thought when he lost his eyes, he lost his psychic powers. Nah, I. T- or at the very least, they may have been like weakened or something. Maybe something that like would made it so he couldn't take on Gamsies with his psychic abilities. He wasn't like in shape too, but that may have meant because he was blind. Yeah, that's uh, no. He still got his psychic powers. Don't get me wrong. Okay. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Jade Sprite and uh, Dave Sprite. Yeah, Jade Sprite meets up with Dave Sprite, and uh, oh my god, he's <laughs> ooh, he's he's ooh, he's got some. Like, one of his wings that's, like, torn off. Yeah, he's, he's, like, got bandaged up. It's, like, massive hole in his patch. chest. It's so, like, f- ah. I, uh, I'm sorry. Holy shit. I was, like, I was really, um, I was excited when he came back because I thought he was already done for and there was no chance he was coming back. But he pulled a Kanaya and is just like, I'll just yeah. put a bandage here. Well, I'm, it, I think it might out. be, like, <laughs> not a thing. That, like, I don't know if sprites can die can necessarily because they're, like, okay. game constructs. Yeah. All right. Which is in a way kind of its own word, like way of fucked up because like imagine you deal like horrible wounds and you're just like stuck in pain forever. Mm-hmm. Like you still feel that, but yeah, you're just out here. <laughs> so yeah, they're chilling. Uh, they kind of start to catch up. Yeah. And Jade Sprite is all sad. <laughs> what a surprise! Yeah. <laughs> what a surprise! She's Jade Sprite's usually so happy again. and outgoing, but <laughs> this time, in an incredibly strange turn of events, Jade Sprite's so sad. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> um, I uh, do like this convo because uh, we get to see uh, Jade Sprite finally like coming to terms with the fact that she was brought back from the dead, like for a reason mm-hmm. to it's... like be helpful. Yeah, she's like, man, I was meant to do something with and like help them. And real Jade is out there being a hero and doing all these things that need to get done. I'm too busy over here being obsessed with myself and dealing with being brought back alive again. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a nice little character thing. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we also learn more about denizens in this conversation. A yeah, big part of this section, a lot, a lot of this section is about, like, kind of turning the understanding of, like, denizens on its head. Because mm-hmm. up until now, they've exclusively been seen as, like, boss big, monster. scary boss. Kill it. Kill that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you win. But apparently, Which, think about to who we learned that from, though. Yeah. Was the trolls. The trolls and they were, are violent. Yeah, they're violent as shit, and their whole deal is like, well, let's get through this game quick. You know, I want to beat that guy. Kill the big boss, right? <laughs> so, like, the only person we heard that from was, like, trolls saying, like, ah, oh, your denizen's like a big boss you have to fight. Mm-hmm. But, uh, no, it's... You gotta, you gotta check your sources. Exactly. Thanks, thanks, Doc, for letting us know <laughs> to check our MLA format. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, like Dave Sprite's talking about how, you know, I went to go talk to Hephaestus in this session because I couldn't beat him in the other one. So I was like, yeah. maybe I can beat him now. But then he's like, I, he offered me the choice, the choice. underlined for dramatic effect. Mm-hmm. And it was that he, I could either do something or he will like repair the sword and that will like cost something. And he yeah. goes, he's very like vague. He doesn't get into it really, mm-hmm. but he repaired the sword. I think he said he can fake, he can repair anything, but he can only repair one thing. Yeah, so it's either like I'll repair the sword or I'll like repair something else, and he he doesn't go into detail about what that other thing is. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he repairs the sword, and then he gives it to to Jade Sprite, and she kind of like ah, I'm, you, like like you said, you know, she goes through her character moments like mm-hmm. I'm gonna do what I can to help, and and she teleports the sword to Dave, mm-hmm. which he then uses. To cut off the moon of Durst to then go out into the the do the, the thing we saw in their yeah. conversation. Yeah, it was cool. It was pretty dope. I uh, I think it's weird that he got. <laughs> I think it's weird that Dave Sprite chose to repair the sword when he knows that Dave can only wield broken blades. You know, like why wouldn't he just send the broken blade to him so he doesn't have to break it again? Which is the first thing he does when he gets it. Uh, no idea. <laughs> like that just it seems uh it seems counterintuitive to me. Like you added a step. I have absolutely no clue. I have ex- absolutely no fucking idea. And it seems like the gifts that the denizens give out are pretty big and important. There might be like a symbolic thing. I don't know. Oh yeah, maybe maybe there's some some I symbolism just, there. That's just going over our heads here. If, if fans, Corey, let us know yeah, what we're missing. Yeah. Any of our expert uh. 
Homestuck enthusiasts and scholars, please raid the comments. At the end of the show, I'm going to need to, like, combine all of Corey's comments into, like, one big, like, image <laughs> where, like, all the text is just tiny to just show who will have left, like, thousands. We're going to have to make a whole separate podcast going through <laughs> Corey's comments and <laughs> explaining why we're wrong on everything. Yeah, so in this, uh, in this part, we said that, uh... That Vriska did something wrong. Here, Corey perfectly explains that she did nothing that wrong ever. That she did ever. nothing wrong at all. <laughs> yes. You know what? I, I'm liking this Corey guy more and more by the second. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's most of what Jade Sprite and Dave, Dave Sprite are doing. Just kind of chilling on the battlefield, being <laughs> bros. I was a uh, bird is a joke. I wonder if he's a vampire now too. <laughs> <laughs> but um. Let's talk about Jade and Carcat here. Jade and Carcat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jade is frog breeding and is messaged by uh, Carcat. Carcat. <laughs> we get the whole password spiel, which is really fucking funny. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the password? It's, it's uh, if okay. I hate myself so much, why uh, don't I hate, hate Mary myself? myself. <laughs> and then he took it and made it this whole big it's, it's thing. It's like a fucking paragraph. <laughs> He's like, did I miss an apostrophe? <sighs> I should have I should have written it down. This is fucking great. <laughs> Mainly... Kanaya has kind of sent her on some sort of quest related to the frog breeding. Mm -hmm. And also Jade made friends with her denizen because Jade's yeah. a friendly little gal and likes being friends. <laughs> Gotta go talk to Echidna. Absolutely. Ooh, I wonder if they're an actual Echidna. It's Knuckles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just green Knuckles. Just chilling. Holy shit. He has to... That's what they need to use to cause the scratch. It's the Master Emerald. Yeah. They <laughs> have to just elongate the Master Emerald into a needle. Oh, God. That's how it all goes. <laughs> yes. Knuckles, tell her where the last frog is, Knuckles. <laughs> Do it. I will. But you have to take me with you. you gotta take... <laughs> You Wherever take... you go. Yeah, which is fucking... How? That's a really weird request. You need to take me, and not only me, every denizen, all their consorts, and every planet they have. All the shit. You have to bring <laughs> it with you. I need you to take that to this new place you create. Jade's like, how the fuck do I do that? What? I don't <laughs> know how to do that. And the kid is like, not my problem. <laughs> fucking figure it out. <laughs> These are the rules. <laughs> Them's the breaks, kid. And the reason why she's traded this, this made this trade is that she needs to figure out where the last frog is because mm -hmm. the last frog is like the most important, and yeah. that will finally create the Genesis Frog, a new universe. It's but gonna be cool. Apparently, the last frog was in her past. Exactly, it's not in the current thing, which is why they're so hard to find. Yeah, because they mentioned in this conversation as well that like Kanaya like looked for hers for like weeks and weeks and weeks and could not find it. Yeah, because I guess the last frog is like kind of meant to be more like personal to you yeah and it's not just gonna be like somewhere on your fucking land the way i assume it works is once you create the new universe that uh that w the last frog at the end of your universe hops back in time to meet you before you created it Maybe. and then dies <laughs> i don't know i assume that just because that's what happened with uh jade's memory uh the frog is there and then it hops in her hand and then immediately kills over it dies because jade zaps it to copy it oh okay i thought it just died i was like man that's weird <laughs> no, jade zaps it to copy its genetic code and then it dies so it's it's another time loop okay but yeah no they got the fucking they got this they got the frog that's what that is they got the frog <laughs> they got the frog um I think the last thing before Vriska is what's going on in the header bar throughout all of this is that Doc, the reason why he has to leave and he gives us a lovely little bowl full of arrow commands, which was very kind of him, mm. uh, is that there's just this like strange like banging noise coming from down the hall and he just takes his his discipline broom yeah <laughs> and he's walking along he's like, oh, you fucking shut up. That's Stop what he says. on the door. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> That the door it has like shit tons of locks on it. You know, that was just <laughs> yeah. like fucking funny. All right, Vriska time. Vriska and Johnny Boy. This is my favorite one. Obviously, what a surprise. Mm -hmm. Vriska simp here. Hello. <laughs> I, uh, it's pretty cool. I like Vriska. Um, this is a cute little section. What do you, we're gonna do? What we did with the other Vriska sections, which is like you go through it first before I start rambling on about how great Vriska's character arc is for fucking another twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so this is another one of those moments of like, oh yeah, bro, we had this conversation already. Don't you remember? Don't you also remember how it didn't end this way and things are kind of going different now? And uh, we have one of those, which those conversations always remind me of Scratch 
because of how uh, he's constantly asking these leading questions, he's trying a, to yeah. point you in the right direction. But um, yeah, uh, Vriska hits up John, and this is the first time she bullies him, which I imagine uh, John kind of vaguely holds as a memory. They talk, uh, and after uh, realizing, oh, wait, you're like outside, we notice that the room that he's in begins to change, and uh, that he's starting to piece together, oh, wait, no, I wasn't here, this isn't real, but he takes way longer than I expect him to. Because John's kind of a fucking goober. He really is. <laughs> John's like, ah, you gotta be fucking tricking me with your alien wiles or whatever. Yeah, you're just, like, no, you're just, just being I'm, a I'm troll. I'm outside. Uh, no, I'm outside your house. I am an alien. You can see it if you look. <laughs> yeah, you can just go look. I have funny horns. It's wild. <laughs> and uh, then they start hanging out. And I think it's really sweet that, like, they never got to hang out in life. But in a way, uh, she gets to hang out with John here now. Yeah. And spend time and start to forge this relationship without the influence of all the shit that they've had to go through exactly this is you're getting into why this is it's so fucking good like all right think about like what gives like what what starts like john and Vriska's like good back and forth is that like you know Vriska's you know putting on her front and everything Mm -hmm. and john as we've seen is like doesn't necessarily care about like the front of Vriska being a cool person. He just thinks that actual Vriska is fun to talk to. Yeah. Right. So why is Vriska putting on her front of mind fang? It all, as we've talked about, you know, that that's her way of trying to reach her ultimate goal of relevance. Yeah. I want to be the person who does the important things because like, that was an experience I never got to have like in my childhood. Cause yeah. you know, when I was a child, it, it, I was completely irrelevant and because at any given moment, uh, if I wasn't being immediately useful, I would have been eaten by Spider Man. Yeah. Right. So there, I am glad. I th- I think that this is the best version of like a happy ending for Vriska. It's the only way mm-hmm. one could happen that would feel justified. Because at the end of the day, with all the shit that Vriska's done, she has to die. Yeah. Right. She has to. It. it, it there's. There's no other way that that becomes narratively satisfying like she needs to pay for what she's done Mm -hmm. but in a story like homestuck where death is not necessarily the end yeah right what why is that a like fitting punishment if it if it doesn't really take you out of consciousness and for Vriska, the answer is a lack of relevance yeah i never get to fulfill my yeah the punishment of of death for her is not like you know eradication Mm -hmm. it's you are now being forced violently by the hand of your friend to take a back seat and cease to be relevant in the narrative Mm -hmm. and that is the ultimate punishment for her yeah and at this point that is now done she's paid the price and will continue to pay that price for eternity rest of the comic exactly so because of that it's like all right well she she is paid for what she's done at this point. She mm-hmm. fucking died. <laughs> she lost eternal life. Mm-hmm. And so now she's stuck in the fucking afterlife. But now that relevance is no longer an option for her, it's no longer a motivation for her. Yeah. It can't affect her actions. At this point, there there isn't any reason for there to be like any mind fang left in her. It's just Vriska. Yeah. And so now, you're right. Vriska and John get to... like get to know each other without hanging over their heads any of the weird Vriska evil bullshit. Yeah. And it's it's nice. And this is from a uh, a, a older variation of John. I when uh when you first see him That's part of why this works is because yeah. this is doomed John from when Terezi tricked him tricked into him. challenging his denizen. Mm-hmm. And we also we get to see some shit about that. Yeah, he uh, visits the castle and just kind of wandered for hours. And then eventually runs into Typhius, I believe his name is. Yeah, he's 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 talking to Typhius, and apparently, essentially, Typhius also like offered him the choice. The choice, and it had something to do with essentially like I kill you, and then that will cause Dave to go back, which is important mm-hmm. for you all like winning. It's like I kill you now. But yeah, then someone it's stops like I guess it. that was like the choice that doomed that this version of John made mm-hmm. is that like oh I am now in a doomed timeline, but if I let myself die here, then I will help all of my friends in the Alpha timeline. So I'll just mm-hmm. let you kill me. I think yeah. is what it's implied to be. Anyway, I like Vriska. <laughs> what a surprise! <laughs> I love a. Uh... 
I really like a... Really covering new material if you like Grub Chat. <laughs> Wait, you like Vriska? Yeah, I know. It's, I don't talk about it that often. <laughs> I wouldn't have guessed. <laughs> but um, I like uh, the duality of that relationship, which I feel like I've already said in the past. But uh, just uh, John and his pure uh, hero's heart with <laughs> Vriska uh, constantly seeing things as, well, how do I win? And uh, John more seeing things of like, well, how do we work together? Yeah. Like, even if it's not to win, how do we just coexist well in a similar way that like rose and kanaya's dialogue bounces off each other really well because of yeah. how like similar they are and how well they just get along with each other mm-hmm. Vriska, once she's not putting on like all the all the mind fang shit to try yeah. and act as cool as possible she's just as much of a weird goober as john is yeah and so they have like a really nice back and forth that it's yeah this is why john versus the best ship <laughs> and i will i will the- this get fight top? anyone i will fight a war i will send i'll, I'll send my my ravenous hordes of fans after <laughs> anyone who disagrees was this uh was this the top one in your tier list this was absolutely the top one on my tier list oh man What's it, this got its own tier. it got its own tier <laughs> <laughs> i believe kanaya and rose are right underneath it okay also uh, at, the, at the very tippy top there yeah that yeah those are pretty good ships i can't argue with that absolutely but no john and Vriska. Fuck yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Um This is when we get to scary things. Is this a sloppy makeout? Sloppy makeouts on the roof now. Now. This is uh Carcat f- responding to the memo that Jade and Kanaya had with him earlier. Mm. Explaining the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Which is that because he didn't because he was rushing everything. Yeah. Kanaya never found that last frog, mm-hmm. and that is the most important frog. And because of that, their Genesis frog was, was mutated. Yes, basically, the way he phrases it is that I, I made I your frog sick. I gave your frog cancer, which That's is of course <laughs> the uh, this is the cause of the tumor, and. Um, basically gets into like like he, he he thinks it goes deeper than that it's not just like oh a big bomb now is there that will blow everything up it's mm-hmm. like it's like you faded their universe for failure yeah every like bit of misfortune that like led to jack's creation and their your entire session being fucked is the result of this it's mm-hmm. not just there's a big bomb now yeah Although also there's a big bomb also now. Bomb. That's also that thing's still there and it's really big and scary and uh, it'll blow up and that's not good. Don't don't let it do that. I do not want that. Uh, as he's saying this, by the way, Jag is getting ready to blow up their entire universe. Because <laughs> I guess the Genesis frog like exists still in their universe. It is their universe. No, no, no. The Genesis frog is somewhere in in Carcat. Okay. In Carcat's session. Yeah. It. I imagine it would still exist there. Yeah, it would have to, like, because they're because yeah. they're not in it, and they're looking into it with Trollian. So I guess it, it either I guess it might exist in the furthest ring. Yeah, somewhere maybe where like somewhere. space and time are weird. Yeah, but no, Jack's there and he's going to blow it up. Yeah. <laughs> That's the main thing. He starts getting the red miles on it. Oh, he's, he's getting a, you know he he was sitting down for like a bite of dinner and he had a, he had his cup of miles and then he spilled it a little bit <laughs> and some of the, some of the miles got on the universe he was like oh dang it oh damn might I as mean, well oh, terminate it drink some delicious miles but now they're all over the all over bile is slick and he's I'm sad <laughs> <laughs> I need that now too just like a, like a like a shitty MS Paint drawing of Jack like drinking a cup of miles a cup of red like you know. <laughs> Oh, I'm fucking. I'm never. I'm never awake enough to have important conversations without my cup of miles in the morning. <laughs> uh, what do you have next? Uh, the next thing I have is a uh, uh, Gamzee's pest. Gamzee's troll uh, turn tech. Okay, I'll I'll let you talk about that. Uh, there's only one thing before that, which is Doc Scratch. Oh yeah, yeah. Teleports into the room where, like, a baby Aradia is like hitting the window with hussy in it yeah she's like breaking but it's not aradia it's different yeah no it's her ancestor yeah it's aradia's ancestor who's a baby and small (laughs) and he's just beating the shit out of this wall and basically doc scratch says like don't fucking worry about that weird guy stop messing up that wall (laughs) he's such a weird fucking little man orange boy don't worry about him we got shit to do all right now you can talk about games (laughs) 
But yeah, what is he doing with Aradia's ancestor? When he, she first popped up, I thought it was Aradia, and I was like, how? <laughs> um, that's explained later. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. We'll get to what's going on with Aradia's um, ancestor over here. It's pretty fucking wild. It's pretty fucking wild. <laughs> uh, when Gamzee's uh, pesters Dave, he immediately breaks into this, like, uh, like tirade at him, just really letting him have it, letting him know that it's his fault. He's the one who started... Uh, all of this mayhem within his head that was so peaceful before he showed him you that You ruined blasphemy. my fucking miracles. <laughs> you ruined my miracles. You took them from me. And uh, Dave, uh, it, which I think is a version of Dave that is before even the game being played. Yes, this is, um, you can tell because he has the comedy glasses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, this Dave legit just Had doesn't no know what he's talking about. no fucking idea what's going on. And is like, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, this game's just thinks it's funny. He's like, oh, you're a fucking cool, like, internet guy. Yeah. Being weird. Like, uh, eventually he gets to that. Once he, like, sees it as, like, a juggalo thing, he starts to think he's doing this ironically, and is like, oh, yeah, that's hilarious. But uh, he does apologize. He's like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sorry, though. Like, <laughs> if I upset you, my bad. But, like, he doesn't, He he's really kind of like, man, I don't get this. I don't know what this dude's on, but uh, Gamzee doesn't care. He's just like, yeah. no, you're the one at fault for Gamzee's showing me the blasphemy. Give some important lore information here. <laughs> like, really important lore information. And I don't know if it's uh, if it's the way he's talking or the fact that Gamzee, Gamzee is just crazy, but I'm losing his message as he's talking about it. Because it seems like he's upset that Watching that video of uh, ICP made him lose faith in his religion. Yes. But I don't understand the logic behind that. Like, I don't know what about the music video made him lose faith. Like, I thought at first it was like a uh, like a drawing uh, a messiah thing. And it's like, oh, this is a uh, this is sacrilegious. You can't do that. And I get like being upset about that. Maybe he wants to like please his God. So like he goes off on a rampage. Uh, but no, that isn't the case because he's lost faith in him. He's lost his miracles and doesn't believe in him anymore. So he's just kind of um, snapping, I guess. I'm also a little lost on that. Like, I just don't understand the logic that would put you in the place of being murder, stru- murder stuck. <laughs> I'm, I'm also a little lost on that. But, but it's also, I think, implied in this conversation and confirmed in Cascade that he's been in contact with Scratch as yeah, well. Yeah, little cow. So it's very possible that... Uh, well, little Cal's talking to him, apparently. Mm. Um, and that could have something to do with it. And also, again, I think in Cascade and in this, it is confirmed he's talking with Scratch. Mm. Like, in contact with Scratch. Yeah. So there, there are more elements at play than just the ICP thing that could have led to this new conclusion. Mm. Even if he ultimately blames it as, like, the catalyst that set him down this road. Yeah. Um, um but you're right, it is a little unclear, uh, at least at this point in time. Uh, Gamzee's in his tirade explains what he viewed, uh, the Dark Carnival to be, which appears to be, like, either, like, Coachella or Woodstock for Juggalos. <laughs> like, it's either, like, the biggest festival for Juggalos to vibe at, or a murderous frenzy, or both. <laughs> I mean, the dark, the dark Carnival is, like, the afterlife. Yeah, yeah, it's like their heaven, but, uh... It's like Valhalla, but for Juggalos. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. That's that's like a good way to think. That's of it. the perfect yeah, yeah yeah. So it's like Valhalla, but instead of like endless honorable warfare, it's just like brutal murder and Fago <laughs> and Fago. Yeah, and Fago like, will run endless. <laughs> and like f- large men with clown makeup and their dicks out, <laughs> which is what real life jugglers are. <laughs> but, uh, They're kind of hype though. <laughs> it's mostly just it's mostly just a bunch of people in a field like doing whippets and like screaming at each other being like you're fucking family bro yeah, that's what most jugglers are i think so like more power to them you know what i mean if that makes you happy you're not hurting anyone go for it yeah, i guess uh, fuck yeah i don't know you're just vibing drink that fago dog yeah Some, the, somebody's got to there uh <laughs> there's a video by fucking brandon buckingham where he goes to uh the Fago, uh, the Fago con- he goes to like the gathering of the Juggalos, and there's a dude with like a Fago gun, and he's like shooting Fago at people. <laughs> so honestly, Gamzee's pretty accurate. Yeah, no, that sounds pretty spot on. So the, minus the murder, yeah. Ga- minus- Real life Juggalos are a lot more like high Gamzee than yeah than than murder stuck Gamzee. The mur- yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Whereas in Homestuck, most of the Juggalos are like murder stuck Gamzee. <laughs> um. Uh, so Gamzee's really like two sides of the Juggalo coin here. Yeah, he, he's, he's he's bridging the, the gap <laughs> as the one true Juggalo. The bridge between universes. 
Oh yeah. Specifically, um, there are two important things that Gamzee does or explains that he did here. Oh yes, yes, that exactly. He uh he conjures up some real harsh whimsies, and then he uh uses his power, I think, as the rage of chuckle as the bard of rage. Yes, and uh, whatever a chuckle voodoo is, and turns our universe cancerous and terminal. No. But kind of. But kind of. Okay. It's essentially uh, like like <laughs> what, what 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 Karkat is talking about is like a very existential, like metaphysical concept of like, you know, your universe is like fated to like be cancerous. Think of Gamzee as like the instrument of that coming about. Okay. okay. Gamzee puts the Harlequin in John's mm-hmm. dreams. Yeah. Which causes John to make the writings on the wall, which causes his dad to think he's into clowns, which causes him to get the clown for his birthday, which causes him to prototype the clown, which causes Jack to kill the Black Queen and ascend and set up to do this whole fucking thing. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, that's the big deal here. Okay. Um, think of Gamzee as, like, the instrument of that. Mm-hmm. And then the other one that's important is that he also uses his chuckle voodoos. Do you remember way back when, when Dave wakes up on Durst and we were like, why does Cal have a dream self? Yeah. This is why. Gamzee puts a dream cal in Dave's dreams, essentially to like torment in, him in his dreams. Okay, okay. Even when you're asleep, you can't get They're away from puppets. fucking puppets. Yeah, okay. Right? But this is necessary for closing the little cal loop because it's dream cal that ends up on Alternia. Okay, okay, all right. Now I get it. Okay. Yes. That's crazy. And also, Cal is maybe sentient. Maybe, yeah. Because Cal is talking to him yeah, and telling him to, to him. kill. <laughs> he also has a dream self, which is like a, I would imagine only a sentient thing could do that. Yeah. But like, on, on a much smaller and insignificant note, I believe, yeah, that shit's wild. But <laughs> when uh, in the middle of conversation, Dave's like, oh, dude, I gotta show you something. And goes to Delirious Biz Nasty to download a... Uh, <laughs> a uh i believe a icp video he's like it comes out in a few months but i, I got the leak he's got the insider <laughs> info on insane clown bossy and uh betty crocker is the one that sends it to him specifically uh in the uh delirious biz nasty uh forum oh and i was like is that real betty crocker and if so she, no wait if so she did it after she left the kids like her oh, like gra- nana sprite and grandpa oh my god God, oh my and, God! Incited whatever. Um, you just noticed a detail happens. that is really heavy foreshadowing for Act Six. Damn, I don't get any of it yet. No, you Except don't. Except that Betty Crocker is about Holy it. Holy fuck! And I, she's not wow. Is <laughs> it that just blow your mind? Is this this crazy? Betty Crocker and Insane Clown Posse are very important for Act Six. <laughs> For all of Homestuck, really. Uh, holy shit. All right. Um, keep that in mind. I, I will. <laughs> keep that in mind for like two more episodes or something. Oh, man. That's. I, I don't know how that's going to play out, but I'm scared. <laughs> holy shit. Okay. Wow. All right. Scrapbook time is over. Oh, wait. Also, they get into oh, a rap battle. They do get into a sick rap battle. We don't get to see it, we but we're to told it's it. like one of the best. It's incredible, apparently. We have it on Good Word from, from Doc Scratch. Mm hmm. That it was fucking sick. Dr. Scratch was like, listen, I'm a cue ball. You can trust me. These were some hot, these were some truly unhealthy incendiaries. (laughs) This was so strict. I love when uh, Tavros said that uh, when they were rap battling. He's like, the bars are so strict, man. Very disciplinary. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, man, I've never heard that used before. You need to start using that now, yeah. (laughs) This is a strict bar. Strict bars, man. Like, (laughs) my ear ducts have been naughty. I'm a licensed physician, and my doctor's orders are to burn my fucking Fucking office down. down. (laughs) Oh, man. Fuck yes. Scrapbook time's over. No more (laughs) scrapbooks. It's it's not happening. All right? No more scrapbooks. Scrapbooks are lame. Scrapbooks are for uh, 55-year-old white women. No one else makes scrapbooks. Doc Scratch is very white, which is why he has one. Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) He is genderless. He is the most white person Period. He's a cue ball. He's a cue ball. It's hard to beat that. <laughs> uh, so, it's time. It says, they, <laughs> he fights this child. <laughs> yeah, no. He, he's like, I'm gonna have to restrict your breathing privileges. No more electricity <laughs> privileges for you. <laughs> it was, um, it was no weird. furniture privileges either, of course. Uh, and he fights a Radia ancestor down. Mm. And, and then he goes, alright, sit down. 
I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you the story of Troll Jesus. And before that, she, yeah, it's literally just Troll Jesus. But uh, but before that, she turns the fifth wall back on. Yes. With her powers. And I thought that was weird because I was like, man, why does she want that so on? So we can see, I think. Oh. Dr. Scratch allows it to happen. Okay. He literally says, and because you're still here and I'm an excellent host, I will tell the story to you also. You <laughs> That's what that is, I okay. think. This is a cool transition. I don't know. The fenestrated walls are cool. Mm. <laughs> I like them. He tells us about Troll Jigas and that 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 actually the ancestors were the first heroes, I believe. So, all right, let's get into this. All right, because this is this is big. Yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> um. So, twelve trolls have twelve ancestors, and they play a game, but they fucking biff it. Yeah, they, they fuck don't it up. win. <laughs> so. They talk to what Scratch refers to as the mother of all monsters. Mm-hmm. I think that's like one of their denizens. Yeah, like Pfeffer. It would have to be. Or something. Yeah, right. Um, and so they, uh, yeah, these twelve trolls that play are our trolls' ancestors, and vice versa. Yeah, our trolls are their, their ancestors. ancestors from the first. Um, time. and it's important to note that Scratch even says that, like, they don't create their own paradox clones. They are paradox clones from. Our trolls session. Our trolls session was always going to happen because it created the Paradox clones that were then also sent pre-Scratch. Okay, so when Karkat sent the trolls back, he sent them all the way back to their first game? So, 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> the Karkat creates Paradox clones. Yeah. 12, he creates them and, and their 12 and ancestors. ancestors yeah. Sends the ancestors back in time, sends them back to like when they when were born. born yeah. Right? Also, something happens that creates clones of those 24. I can't get into what it actually is, but okay. something happens that sends clones of those 24 into the pre scratch session as well, uh-huh. flipped to where yeah, well, they, you know, the, the paradox clones of them. Is yeah. Tro-Gigas. Exactly. Uh, is the ancestors and their ancestors become the the 12 original people that played the game originally yeah. which then do the scratch to cause his universe to exist mm-hmm. all right okay so now in the new in the in the post scratch universe oh, part of the bargain here it's so fucking complicated <laughs> it's so complicated fuck me <laughs> okay part of the choice was essentially like I can... you can either just fucking die. And that's the end of your species. And that's the end, but, like, you don't put anyone else in danger with, like, English and shit, mm-hmm. right? Or, there's hope for your species, because in the in the pre- in the post-scratch world, things will be different enough on Alternia mm-hmm. that- They'll be built for defeating this challenge Exactly. Easily. And they accept, therefore, causing Doc Scratch to be made. Because Doc Scratch was then, we saw him be created Mm -hmm. in the new universe, sent back in time through the Sky and Defense portal to be the first Guardian of Alternia. So his goal, his goal throughout all of this to the larger means of ending the universe and creating Lord English, right, is to, like, create, make Alternia into a super fucked up and awful society Mm -hmm. and keep it that way. So Throughout that the ages, strong enough to fight the exactly game because the problem in the original session was that Alternia was super nice super and peaceful. awesome. Yeah, it was super fucking. Everyone was great and friends with each other, and therefore, when they got in the game, they got fucked. Mm-hmm. So that's what that's that's what this is. It's holy shit. Okay, Dark Scratch is literally the problem. Uh, oh no, he just puts himself in anywhere, <laughs> and then and he it... makes them racist. <laughs> that he made him super racist. Doc yeah. Scratch made the trolls racist. Because racism makes you better at video games. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yes. That's, that's just what the lore Cannon seems to, to be. Canon to Homestuck. If you are racist, you are now better at CSGO. Uh, <laughs> that's why, that's why Fe- uh, Equius is actually the best League of Legends player of all time. <laughs> Man, he totally played League of Legends. He's so <laughs> racist. And therefore, incredible at uh, playing playing League. All right. So, new session, right? New mm-hmm. universe. New universe. The previous right. people are now the ancestors. And all everything's hunky-dory, except Signless. Oh, yeah. He's a Carcat mutant man. Still has memories of the... M- mutant man is starting to have... Good. Yeah, exactly. He's starting to have memories of the previous session. 
which is all well and good, except that the memories of the previous session are showing how nice and awesome everyone was. Mm -hmm. And he goes, what the fuck? Man. Why isn't real life like that? Yeah, I don't want to be persecuted for having weird blood. Yeah, that, <laughs> that was hype. Why can't we do that? Yo, that was cool. Hey, yo. <laughs> hey, guys. This shit's cringe. <laughs> Anybody we... else hate racism? Yo, and they were like... <laughs> Fuck you, bro! We fucking love racism, you piece of shit! What? What? Stop that! Stop. No. no! And so they kill him. They torture and murder they him. They Jesus him. Yeah. But that's okay, because Jesus will come again. And when he does, he'll, he'll, bring he'll do it again. The end of the world with him. No, no, okay, here's the thing. You're, you're, you're confusing the signless with Karkat's ancestor. That's not true. What? That's not true. There's the signless... And then there's yeah. Karkat Ancestor, which is the second coming of the Signless. Okay, wait, yeah, but wouldn't all that bad shit have to happen on the fucked up version of Alternia? You know what I mean? Fuck, wait. So are like, there two they have been Ancestors? Yeah, like the first one. So is one, Karkat Ancestor... Which was the hero, and then... Yeah, so... It would be the third coming of the Signless. Is Karkat... <laughs> so why are there two Ancestor Karkats? Why are there two Ancestor Karkats? yeah. There was, no, nah, there's the one from the new session, and then the past one, the ancestor was Karkat, and Karkat's ancestor was the hero, and then he has memories of that life in a peaceful planet. No, 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 no. Because, okay, the signless happens before the ancestors do anything in what? in the new session. But that signless is also an ancestor? He has to be. Yeah, like, he has to be. <laughs> and then there's... The second coming of the signless that is not Karkat, that is different from the signless, so I guess that's not Karkat's ancestor? Because that's the one that's raised by the Dolorosa, which is Kanaya's ancestor. Which is ancestor. Kanaya's ancestor, yeah. So there's two of them that aren't Karkat. What the uh, fuck is going on? <laughs> I assume the second coming was Karkat. Well then how is Karkat here? What, what do you mean? He came at the end of, he came during his session, like when he was born and sent the slime back. No, because this one's also killed. The second coming is yeah. also murdered? Yeah. Oh, man. He's also murdered along with, uh, that's when the, because remember, all the ancestors are like fucking a shit ton of time before them. Yeah, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So if, that can't be just, that can't be literally Karkat. Because, like, there's no fucking way. No, no, I'm not, I'm not saying, uh, Karkat was, is older than everyone. I'm saying that, like, he, he's supposed to be the second coming and then I guess die at the end of the universe? So I guess Karkat's the third coming of the signless. <laughs> and there's a there's two There was one in the middle that was I guess boring and no one really cared about. I guess. <laughs> I guess. And that's the one that fucked Nepta Ancestor. Oh, oh, I see now. Oh. And had a Solix ancestor friend, the Psionic. And also the Dolorosa as a cool mom. Oh, man. Okay, I thought I had it. You're starting to understand why this is hard to wrap your head around. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had it. I'm more confused than when we started I'm, talking. I'm also more confused than when we started talking. If someone understands what Corey. we're saying. <laughs> Corey. I hate to be that I guy. I hate to be, but come on, but, man. Corey, if you could explain what the heck the silence, the signless hey, it is. It doesn't matter. They all fucking die. It's, they all die, but they don't die, or They don't die, but I mean, <laughs> uh, fucking the disciple lives out the rest of her days in a cave mm -hmm. uh, because... Uh, spreading his message dark lear decided not to kill her because he's equious and he's like you know he's what like, you're not that bad you're actually pretty sweet for yeah. some reason i don't and know why i feel this the dolorosa too. is heavily implied to be the slave in mindfang's journal oh okay yeah because then they say she got captured at the end of the thing yeah okay um and also the psionic gets turned into a fucking warhammer 40k just turned into like, a battery ship. yeah i was like oh my god he's just <laughs> he's a piece just of the a, ship yeah, to he's them. just in the ship now <laughs> It's so fucked up. It's not like he's a, a like a guy or like running a job or doing something. He's just a part of it. And then later on, the summoner is gonna do a thing, but then he gets he I guess you know with with Vine Fang and everything, and we we already know how that goes down. Mm. He starts another rebellion, um, and then he kills Mind Fang, and then he I guess dies. Um, and that new rebellion is what causes the everything to be decentralized. Everything's decentralized now, mm. which is all well and good, except then uh, the Condes. Fefri's ancestor. Okay, cool. Who is also uh, the current empress of the Troll Empire. Yeah. Fefri's ancestor is still very much alive and kicking. Oh, fuck. Like... Because I... Remember what I said. Fucking... Fuchsia's lived for, like, thousands of years. Oh, my the current, God. current... Like... 
the current empress yeah, is that's Feferi's, Feferi's ancestor. ancestor. That's wild. Yeah, <laughs> it's fucked up. She's like, man, no, nah, I need to take. I can't wait to become empress and you know change things around. When literally past you does not want that at all. No. <laughs> So she's going around, bombing around in the universe, being all cool and, like, kidnapping shit. Yeah, yeah. She's got a trident ship. And I believe it's said here that she... I I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Actually, I have no idea if that's true. Never mind. Fuck <laughs> okay. off. No, I'm not going to say that because I have no <laughs> idea if that's true. Um, anyway, she's out doing shit, and she's far away, and then... She gets, like, a radio. She gets, like, you know, a call on, like, the phone. Like, mm-hmm. you know, she picks up her, like, iPhone 3. And then she's like, what, okay, fucking, what's, what's going on? And they're happening? like, everyone's fucking dead. dead. The vast glove is happening, I think. Yeah. Like, you're like, too far away. You got to keep it calm. And so she's fucking racing back to old Ternia. But she's too late. And then uh, the psionic gets killed by the glove. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye, Solix man. <laughs> and then she makes it back. Or she's about to make it back. That's what. That's how Dunk Scratch ends the story. It's like, in a couple minutes, she'll be here. Oh. And when that happens, there's gonna be someone to meet her, and then we're gonna have another fuck. We're gonna pull the rug out from under you again. I'm gonna, I've, I've stacked you up on like ten rugs, so <laughs> like I can keep pulling rugs. them out from under <laughs> you. Yeah. Uh. So the the the, the Aradia ancestor is actually uh the handmaid, and mm-hmm. she got sent wrong. So when Cargat sent her back in time, she got sent back way later than everyone else to like a little bit ago for Doc Scratch, right? Yeah. Like, way after everyone is already dead. So then Doc Scratch has been watching her, and then once Lord English gets here, she's going to become Lord English's servant person, mm-hmm. and then go back in time with him, so then all throughout history, similar to Doc Scratch, she will be, uh, like, his buddy, and help him make sure everyone's racist, but, like, a lot more violently. <laughs> Are you with me? <laughs> Barely. <laughs> okay. so, 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 Doc Scratch has already met Arati's ancestor. Yeah. Right? Like, they've been working together this whole time. And then, now, he sees where she's born, right? And then took her in and is going to send her back in time with Lord English to go be the person that he worked with to make sure that Alternia stayed fucked. And then, in a few minutes when the Condus gets here, mm-hmm. that version of the Handmaid will come talk to the Condus and give her, like, the same deal. Like, immortality in exchange for service to Lord English. And then... Uh, you will be my replacement. So now, finally, I can fucking die. Please kill me. I'm begging you. And then she <laughs> does. That's the plan. Okay. <laughs> it was a long, it was a long walk, but we got there. <laughs> oh my god! Fucking ancestors are wild. It's such a nutty conundrum. It's a, there's a <laughs> lot to deal with with ancestors. <laughs> okay. Story time's over, windbag. Whoops, oh shit, get this fucking clock out of my way. I am a one-man stampede, and I've got a broom, and that peel of splintering wood you hear is the last gasp of a priceless antique disintegrating beneath the outrageous fury of my authorial boots. <laughs> Hussy's here. Hussy's here. Thank fuck. I can't take any more ancestor bombshells, Hussy. <laughs> Hussy, save us Hussy, from please. the war. Figure it. We gotta, uh, we gotta come back. Uh, but, um... <laughs> He uh, starts beating up Doc Scratch, and that's when we find out he toy stories whenever Andrew Hussey's around. (laughs) And fucking... Andy's coming! Quick, fucking... Oh, God! (laughs) Hussey's almost here! Quick, turn into a puppet! (laughs) Oh, man. Um, So, yeah, he just... He just beats the shit out of him. (laughs) Mm, Breaks his leg. He breaks his leg and everything. (laughs) I believe you will find as hosts go, I am simply the best there is! As he just continues to fucking decimate him <laughs> oh man uh, and then the handmaid runs off yeah that's when she takes her opportunity to escape I assume something will happen to her that will allow the time loop to close because as she escapes you can see the Condus's ship getting closer yeah it's like right there also I'm thinking this is the yard him interacting with the story directly right now no 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 what this has nothing to do with that. Is, and it's also almost completely inconsequential. Is the yard the fifth wall? Closer. Closer. Okay. I'm getting there. <laughs> we will talk about what the yard is. Don't worry. Because it is revealed. It's revealed. We'll talk about the yard. Don't it worry. We'll revealed. talk about the yard. <laughs> oh my god. This is such a long fucking episode. Cascade, man. Yeah, All right. All right. We're almost We're almost to Cascade. We're almost there. Mm-hmm. Shush pap. Shush pap. <laughs> Time for shush pap. There you go. 
Ah, oh, there you go. <laughs> Everyone's standing around. They're all about to fight. And then Karkat says, fuck this. Actually, Shush, no. Pap. I'm Put going to be a good Moira because I wasn't a Moira before, but I'm going to be a good one. I'm going to fulfill my Moira duties. I'm going to calm you the fuck down with the almighty Shush, Pap. <laughs> And the Knight of Blood so embraced the Bard of Rage, and in each other's arms they were a quiver. And with righteous pap and blessed shush did he quell his brother's fury, for the Knight looked upon his Bard all acting up and completely losing his shit, and he did resolve to calmeth his juggalo ass right the fuck down. <laughs> right the fuck and down. so calmed down his juggalo ass was, and would continueth to be for all time. And the Knight, in totally settling a murderous crown's ludicrous shit down proper, said, Let there be, boy Let there be more elegance, and it was so. And between Moirails would flow bounteous mirth, and they did hug bumpeth plentifully, and honks of reconciliation echoed far and true into the darkness upon the face of the deep. And it was good. It was good. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's enough of that. I, I, uh, I don't know how to feel about that in particular. Like, it almost feels like a, a cop-out for this intense rage he's been slinging. But I, it's also very cute, and I'm glad it's over. <laughs> You're kind of right. Like, like if you phrase it in a more general sense of, like, Kirkett finally, like, realizes that, like, oh, I have to be the Moirail that I've been, like, failing to be this whole time. Yeah. And, like, I can fix this. I like that. I like that, right? yeah. I just wish it happened in, like, a conversation instead of... Instead of shoosh pap. Whatever the fuck a shoosh pap is. Like... The shoosh pap comes back, by the way. I bet it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> um, I think in Friends him... You have to shoosh pap someone and like calm them down. But it's like, pretty great. Yeah, I don't know. It's just like it seems like such a small thing. Yeah, like I feel like this required a much more thought out resolution. Yeah. Than what we got. Like which is my a man pap. legit murdered like several people, several main and characters. And he's just calmed down now. And now he's vibing because he shush papped him. Yeah. So, uh, it's, but, uh, you know, whatever. I'll let it slide because I've enjoyed a lot of this comic. Yeah, <laughs> it's fine. It's, you know what? Carcat did his did his thing. He did what he had to do. Yeah, the message is there. Is like, ah, we did it. Finally, he's took up his role as as, as his Moirail, which he failed to be this whole time. And, and we got our shit figured out. Mm -hmm. There we go. Good for him. Yeah, that's the shush pad. <laughs> I uh, looked at the bowl in the... In uh, the banner, and it's I'm running low on forward. You're running a little low on forwards. Dark, <laughs> dark. Dark, I, gotta, I need a uh, refill, buddy. My fix, I need it. Oh, doc, I, <laughs> listen, I I paid for like the cup, and I'm still sitting here. I get free refills while I'm eating in. All right, that's how this works. <laughs> uh, Jade's dead. Wait, who? Jade's dead. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because fucking Club Zeus comes Club in. Club Zeus fucking did it! He parachutes in on the a giant heart. block of fucking shaving cream. Is, how could shaving cream be so flammable? And Jade's dead! And Jack's like, Aww. what the fuck? He's mad, and then he kills Club Zeus. And he Deuce. kills Club Zeus, Club Zeus is dead. I think every member of the Midnight crew is now dead except for Jack. Except for Jack, yeah. Uh, it's confirmed that Dee Dee is dead in Cascade. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's it. Jack's the only member of the Midnight Crew now. <laughs> um, shit. Bye-bye. Bye. Uh, also worth noting, did you notice in this animation what happened to the Genesis Frog? When he, uh... It fell into the forge. Oh, man. The Genesis Frog is dead! <laughs> Clubs Deuce knocked the Genesis Frog into a fucking volcano. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh fuck! Oh Clubs god. Deuce did it. He. Oh my god! Think about that. Think about the fact that all of Durst's society is built on we all hate this frog so much. It is the worst thing ever. And Clubs Deuce is finally the one who d destroys it. The most powerful member of the Midnight Crew. The most powerful Durst agent of all time. <laughs> Anything else before Cascade? Yeah, no. Nah, uh. All right. Oh. Here it is. The Homestuck Flash. Think about this. This is like the one... I need you to understand. When this came out, mm. when, on the day that Cascade came out, yeah. Newgrounds crashed. <laughs> Newgrounds could not handle the sheer number of people that were trying to watch Cascade. It was that popular. It Yeah. No, it was fucking ridiculous. This is... Ah. <laughs> oh my god. Another thing I want to mention... This is the one complaint I have about Cascade. 
Yeah. I have one complaint, and it will go. It will become worse going forward. Oh. The guest art is off the charts, and that's cool and all. Mm-hmm. When I first read Homestuck, and I saw like these, you know, a lot of like the guest art. It looks really nice. None of the yeah. art looks bad. All the art looks great. Yeah. Right. The problem is one of cohesion. Yeah. When I okay. first watched this, I was like, oh my god, Homestuck's like getting more production value. Mm-hmm. But now, all I see is like them jumping art styles, and like, it, none of the art looks bad. It all looks great. But like, something about Homestuck characters with lines, like, like full, like, line art, mm-hmm. just is wrong. <laughs> I don't like it. Yeah. Right? In terms of, in terms of like, a f- in an official flash animation right next to the other like designs mm-hmm. right and i think that overall cascade still looks very good and works but as we get into some of the animations later on in the comic i'm going to start to get more and more annoyed at how much it flips between <laughs> like guest <laughs> art and and hussy art yeah. at an alarming rate it's I'm, so i think cascade overall still works but it's really starting to get noticeable here, like switching between like art styles pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. It, that in a way that feels kind of jarring. Yeah, that's the one thing I'm going to complain about with Cascade because the mm-hmm. rest of it is fucking incredible. That's really good. <laughs> uh, it is not my favorite Flash animation in the comic, oh, but mm-hmm. it is the best, hands down. Is, it's not even close. Is your favorite one in the future? Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, it's my favorite character, which is why it's my favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, this is the best one, hands down. Best, best Flash animation in the comic. It's not even close. It's so cool. <laughs> Ooh, are you ready? Yeah. All right. Scratch time. <laughs> it's time to time do it. Time for the scratch. John is taking out his big needles, and he's going to do the scratch. And uh, the game spawns a bunch of shit at him, which is what Carcat said was going to happen. Yeah, and he's fighting, fight so he's trying to like fight them all off while doing the scratch, and it's really fucking scary and difficult. <laughs> he's doing it. Hard confirmed, Club's Deuce is dead. Yeah. Right <laughs> here. Club's Deuce, dead. <laughs> oh, God. We kind of like switch to future Jack mm-hmm. in the troll session, who is... Reaching out? Yeah, is he destroying... You're talking about when he's destroying Bilius? Yes, he's destroying Viola Slick. He's activated the Red Miles, Mm -hmm. and he's going to destroy our entire universe. Uh, All of it. All of it. (laughs) All at once. Fuck that frog. And then the fucking flash window, like, starts to grow and shit. Mm. How cool was that? Fucking, uh... Jade God tearing. I thought that was fucking astounding. Oh my god. The fucking. B- b- think about the flash animations have all been in this one little window the entire time, and now it's just like, it's like growing and shit. Mm-hmm. It's like the coolest fucking thing that's ever happened in all of reality. <laughs> <laughs> all these layered animations. This is fucking cooler than a hundred years of warfare. <laughs> <laughs> Something I didn't quite grasp uh, for the part of it where uh, Jade and. Uh, not Jade. For the part of it where Rose and Dave are standing on their dream quest beds, I guess. I'll call it the quest cot. Um, I will let you know what the name of them are because we basically now have multiple instances of them working. And it's more explicitly explained later, but all it does is explain how they show off this. Um, this is deep in the heart of Durst, which we see them fly into uh, yeah, yeah. and we saw Aradia go into. So this is the same way that Aradia got tiered, yeah. is what they've done. Okay. Uh, they have... In the heart of Prospect and Durst, you find the Sacrificial Slabs, mm-hmm. which is the only way you can God Tier without a Dream Self. So if you die on your quest bed, if your real self dies on your quest bed, then you God Tier as your Dream Self. Mm-hmm. If your Dream Self dies on its Sacrificial Slab, and your normal self is dead, then you also God Tier. Okay. That's the system there. Yeah. There you go. Confusion wrapped up. Uh, no, uh, I, it wasn't no. about the... Fuck. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I appreciate the energy, but um, I was more uh, thinking about, like, in those tubes they were in front of, uh, there was, like, a machine with a countdown. They got these That's the tumor. Tubes. Oh, yeah, yeah, the tumor hatched open and had that machine in it, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So uh, the two tubes seem to be showing the destruction of both our universe and the trolls' universe. You're You're skipping ahead here. Oh, my bad. You've skipped ahead a decent amount. Because the first thing that happens after, like, the Flash window starts doing shit is that um, the White King comes out of the time capsule. Yeah, He's there, and they high-five, and it's like, God. It's like, oh, queen. Hello, I remember you, my wife. I was reading this book. Hold hands. (laughs) And then Jack brings uh, Jade's body, puts it on her quest bed, Mm. and then says, see ya. And then he flies into the frog temple, presumably into the time capsule, 
and now he's on future earth and he immediately kills both of them <laughs> he waited all that time <laughs> he was like i'll be right back and just sat there filled with rage i imagine for yeah. the next millennia <laughs> he's fucking dead they're they're both dead it's so fucking scary <laughs> Oh my god! He's, he's on a vicious rampage. Like, he's on a vicious fucking he's made rampage. for murder. Um, AR starts to try and, like, blow up the exile stations. Yeah, yeah. Um, but before he can blow up the last one with WV in it, um, he just, fuck, he kills him. <laughs> yeah, man. Chops his head clean off. He's done. Um, but that saves PM. He was about to kill PM, but then AR starts blowing shit up and he gets distracted. Yeah. So that literally saves her life. And then he just teleports inside and he's trying to get the exile station to work somehow mm-hmm. and then he's like no power i got it <laughs> and he jojo's he, he jojo's wv no this is what i need <laughs> how sad were you when you saw the mayor die oh man i was really upset because i was waiting for uh his dream to finally come to fruition of uh him finally having the last stand with jack and getting that round two he deserves for, yeah. because the last time he was way underpowered and now he's gone through a journey he hasn't really learned much it seems but he's getting there and I was like yeah finally the fight oh god okay <laughs> <laughs> just fucking yoinks it and he like teleports it into the thing it's so cool Jack's just awesome Jack's just really awesome he's badass I'm and then just... he fucking he uses the exile station and that's how he gets to the troll session we mm. finally know how he did it which is why they've been rigging up all the exile stations to explode this whole time. So he couldn't have the Yeah, they were trying to stop him. But Think about how... Ah, they were all trying to stop him from fucking getting in. <laughs> no! It was, it was pointless. It was pointless. He, he was, was already, already here. Oh. <laughs> okay, now we're at the Durst Dreamers doing shit. Okay, yeah, yeah. Jade and Rose... Fucking, I keep saying Jade. Rose and Dave... Yes. <laughs> ...are uh, at their sacrificial slabs... And Chilling ...with the tumor. Next to the tumor. And you're right, like, the tumor's kind of, like, showing, like, the death of, of their universes. As if, like, the death of their universes, like, will create, will, will like, cause the tumor to explode. Mm-hmm. And it's, like... That's, like, like, the countdown, almost. Like, the yeah. countdown is, like, counting down to both of their universes being blown up. Mm-hmm. Which are, in some way, like, contained within those things. I guess. <laughs> I guess. But, uh, yeah, Jack's about to uh, kill Billy Slick, which is our universe, and then... What's happening on theirs? What's causing their universe to blow? Um, well, it, like zooms in on the blue one, and then then we get Snowman in spades. Oh yeah, because he shot her. What are you waiting for? Draw <laughs> spades, and he does, and he shoots like the fucking cue ball bullet, and the cue yeah. ball bullet hits her, <laughs> which is just a great little tension because she's the eight ball. Yeah, and so she's been pocketed now by the cue ball, mm-hmm. and 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 so she fucking dies. <laughs> Bye bye, universe. That's causing the end of the universe, universe is dying. Oh god. And then fucking Jade got tears, bro. Jade got it's tears. Literally so cool. And is such a badass. It's so awesome. Oh my fucking god. Uses her time powers immediately to flex. She's <laughs> she's, she's a she's part first guardian now. Yeah. She's part dog. <laughs> Uh, oh my, think about how, remember one of the first things you learned about Jade is that she's a fucking furry. And now she's a dog. Now she's completed it, yeah. She's, she's fi- made the oh transformation. Now she's final. now she's in fursuit all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she just starts she's like, like. Shrinking the lands. Yeah. Oh my gosh, she's like, embiggens this big golden ship and she just starts like, she just picks up the battlefield. She's like, I, right, bye. Right, I'm gonna take that I'm one. gonna take that real quick. <laughs> It's so cool. And it was really cool. Uh, what was it when she, from the perspective of a uh, Dave Sprite on yeah, the planet, and she's just and getting she like grows, really fucking massive. But for her, she's just shrinking it. Yeah, and I was like, oh, that's so dope. It's so awesome. And then uh, John finishes the scratch, and so Jade's like, cool, you're with me now. All right, now let's Boink. get the fuck out of here. And she picks up all the rest of the planets, and then she starts. She takes the fourth wall yeah. out of her house, which has been sitting in there that whole time. Remember. Mm-hmm. And the only reason, and we know on the other side of that fourth wall is the jacket. The jacket, yeah. right? She grows it out real fucking big. And you're like, what's going on, bro? <laughs> and then PM puts on the ring. She becomes cool. She becomes, uh, <laughs> uh, what is it? Male noir. Male noir. <laughs> noir princess. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> she, she, 
she uses, she believes in the power of the postal system, <laughs> and then she she puts mail into all of her blood veins and becomes powerful. It's fucking beautiful. It looks like her and Jack are about to start They're about standing to... off because 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 uh, oh, okay. We see Gamzy talking to Scratch. Yeah. And like the dialogue is something along the lines of like, you know, what you know, what what are we? And he highlights the text. Suckers. Suckers. <laughs> Suckers. As Doc Scratch, I would like to bring you back to Rose Pester Informant. Mm. You know, if I lie and I tell you, that's a joke. What if you tell me but only after a while? Well then that's a prank. It's more of a prank, yeah. I don't play those very often. Very often. This is Doc Scratch's prank. <laughs> As the tumor explodes, and it does not destroy the green sun, but instead creates it. No fucking shit the explosion's big enough for them to see from other sessions. It's the green sun! <laughs> they just made it. They just made it. Fuck! Oh no! Did they make a second one? No, or is they, this the initial they created creation it. of it? Because okay. they're, the, they're in the furthest ring, mm-hmm. which is... Like, time and space are all bucky bucky. Mm-hmm. So they've essentially created the furthest... They've created the green sun in the past, essentially. Mm-hmm. Okay. Which is why for Aradia it already exists, because she's in, like, now time. Yeah. And essentially just by traveling through the furthest ring, Obviously. they've gone into the past and then created it. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. <laughs> He's like, you fell, fell right into my plan. Oh, there we go. Cool. So everyone sees it, and they all see it, and they're like, it's fucking over there, quick, it go! Is. And then Solix fucking throws the meteor, and that it's super cool! And then Jack's like, I'm gonna fucking go over there, too. And then the male princess says, the fuck you no, are! you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not acceptable. Not till you get through me. Oh my god. And then David Rose got to you. And David Rose got to you. We got the knight and seer, bro. Oh my god, it's so fucking cool. And this is why the trolls couldn't see any of the other ones got to you, because it happened right as the timeline went dark. Mm -hmm. For all of them. Yeah, there was just no information on it. Oh my god. And and then they come out of the green sun, and Varadi's right there. It's literally so fucking cool, bro. I'm, I'm. Yes! I'm so hype. I'm so fucking hype. It was so sick. Oh my god. And fucking male princess is facing out Jack. Think about what's happening right here. Is is this is the new white queen. Mm-hmm. The white queen is now facing down this like fucking traitor of of, of everything. It's like I'm gonna I'm, like bring them to justice. It's so cool. <laughs> Jade makes the fourth wall really fucking big. It's just flies, flies through the, it. She <laughs> fucking goes through it. She literally like like we see in the window, like all of Act One through Five Homestuck, mm-hmm. she's literally exited Acts One through Five Homestuck to go into New Homestuck. In in the fullest sense of that, <laughs> in like the fullest meta sense, she has exited Acts Five through One through Five of Homestuck d- d- physically. <laughs> <laughs> and there we go. They they're fucking gone. They just that's it. <laughs> Fuck. I just. Uh... Oh, yeah, and the curtain closes and everything's on fire. Yeah, everything's super <laughs> on fire, by the way. <laughs> oh. Oh, my God. Thoughts on Cascade here. Thoughts on Cascade? I thought it was, uh, the, uh, the style switch wasn't as, uh, jarring for me personally, and I thought it was, like, really pretty, and, uh. Oh, it's really pretty, don't get me wrong. I was, the whole time I was like... Oh I only bring God. that up here because it's going to get more obnoxious in the future, and this mm-hmm. is the first time I've, it's, like, really, like, noticeable. super noticeable. Because there's some in, like, Make Her Pay and everything, but, like, yeah. it, it's blended together a lot better. This That's the only reason I bring it up here. I don't think it's that big of a problem in Cascade. Mm. It's just that this is the first time it's, like, really noticeable. And, like, prevalent. And it, I just, so I'm just bringing it up here as it becomes more of an issue in the future. Mm-hmm. But no, Cascade's fucking gorgeous. So... Jade and John exited what I believe is reality. They've exited their session, Acts 1 through 5 of Homestuck. Okay, and that... They've essentially exited the comic. Okay, would that also count as the universe? Like Yes. Okay, but Jade and Dave are still in it. No. No. They are in the furthest ring. Oh, which is on the out... Okay. Yes, that is not a session. Okay. And that's the only reason. Jack see, and the, the reason why they wouldn't all want to do that is because the furthest ring's pretty much fucking suicide. Mm-hmm. If you don't have someone who can navigate it, yeah, which they were able to do through the horror terrors, mm-hmm. right? 
But it's not like just anyone can avoid the scratch by just he- chill it in the furthest ring while it happens. Mm-hmm. So that's how they're avoiding it. Yeah, and uh, that's where Jack and Male Princess are fighting right yes. now. Yes. Okay. And that's where the trolls are as well. Mm-hmm. Man, I wrapped up nicely. That's, <laughs> that's yeah. <laughs> that, Ooh. It's, oh god, I what's what's gonna, what's happening? What's well, gonna happen? <laughs> I have a, a, an answer for you <clears throat> because right now it is time. To together watch S Begin Intermission 2. Oh my. Yes. Um, now, for those of you at home, if you're watching the video version, I'm going to put it in the video version. Um, if you're watching the audio version, we're going to do like a 3, 2, 1, go, and you can kind of start it at the same time that we do. Here you go. This is your little your bud. Make sure you're positioned in front oh, of the yeah, microphone yeah. here. I got you. And, uh,. <laughs> That's the plan. We're going to watch it together. You fucking ready? Oh, yeah. All right. Three, two, one, go. It's a loading. Uh-oh. Lord English. Oh, oh fuck, bro. <laughs> it's so fucking scary. <laughs> oh, God. You remember that, right? Mm-hmm. The funny little server, yep. That's where Kanaya finds it. No, that's um the one Solix oh, was talking yeah, about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, there's, that, see, this is the program. Mm-hmm. It's finally getting to activate. Yep, because uh, we watched the Snowman die. They look at all, like, all the eight balls yeah, in there. Yeah, they don't change. Uh, oh. <laughs> God. Ghost. Oh my fucking god. He's an excellent host. <laughs> I, that's what that means. Oh Lord English god. is literally fucking in him. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god. That's so cool. He's so buff, bro. He's too jacked. Is that? Oh, it's the it's the key stick. Yep. It's a key epilepsy warning. He's <laughs> clogging. <laughs> so much. <jacket. laughs> there it is. We're talking about that. Don't worry. The fucking never-ending story, Wolf. <laughs> So, that's it. <laughs> Let's talk about that, um, because as I'm sure you've just realized, we're all fucked. <laughs> yeah, no, everybody's dead. We're all... <laughs> so, let's talk about that. Uh, what have we just witnessed there? What have we just witnessed there? Starts off pretty standard, right? Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're just like, you're, you're fucking in awe. <laughs> Uh, man. What are you feeling right now? Uh, mixtures of horror and uh, um, uh, confusion, a bit of anticipation, I guess. But mostly just horrible dread. Yeah, but mostly overwhelming dread. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. I yeah. So that music uh, is just called English, <laughs> which is fuck you. Um, and that song is a palindrome. Oh, it's oh wow! Yeah. It is the same forward and backward. So that 
<laughs> oh no. He's ba- he's here. He's and very much here. He also was Doc Scratch, or I guess he was in he Doc was in Scratch, Doc Scratch, and he got summoned when the universe yes. died. Yes. So Doc Scratch was literally an excellent host. Yeah, he was like the host for he him. was oh, the host I for Doc it. Scratch. Okay. Did he is Doc Scratch dead now? Doc Scratch in is now dead. To Keep in mind, yeah, Doc, have him Doc Scratch literally said like when I like when I die. Uh, then in, then Lord English will also come forward. Yeah. So he's trying to kill himself. Um, and Andrew Hussey is responsible for that. He killed him. Andrew Hussey killed him. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of a meme, but only only kind of. Only kind of. Like, um, <laughs> he's the one who would have yeah. power enough too. So as we see, like, yeah, the, the, the universe has now died, right? Snowman is dead. Yeah. And therefore the program executes on the server and summoning Lord English. Lord English is here. And here is where your questions about the yard are solved. He summons his coat, and we see Jade go through, through the, glass. The, the glass. Do you remember on the fourth wall that um, the handmaid was, like, beating with the chair? Yeah. Andrew Hussey was, like, moving these two fourth walls to be, like, next to each other. And the yardstick is in between them. The yard oh. is the space between Acts 1 through 5 and Act, Act 6, 6 that okay. they are traveling through. So when he refers to his, like, surgical precision, that's what he means. It is it is passive. It is, you know, he's not, like, doing anything, like, directly, really. He's just mm-hmm. moved these things to be there to make the progression possible. I would like to go back and read what he specifically says. Yeah. As the indulgent self inserts grow in frequency, you may, or no, whatever, here it is, here it is. Mm -hmm. When the time comes, I will interact directly with the events of the narrative, but this moment will be responsibly confined to a passive intervention. It will be compact, surgical, and essential. My involvement will have such precision, I have even managed to quantify it in units of physical measurement. I will be involved in the narrow corridor of space through which light will pass in three nanoseconds. My window of influence end to end will be exactly one yard. So that's what it is. It is, it is a very like, passive you know it's not like andrew hussey like you know shaking mm-hmm. john's hand and being like here you go here's the fucking here's the key to the universe you here's, got it <laughs> here's the warhammer of zilly who too right here you know <laughs> no it's just like a it's just a quiet i'm gonna move these two windows to face one another to essentially allow them to leave act five and, and enter act six. Into act six yeah it's fucking awesome <laughs> oh my god anyway lord english is here and we're all gonna die yeah and we're all dead because Doc Scratch on his own was quaint and quirky and also conniving. He's Mr. Vanilla Milkshake. He's and... your friendly uncle that <laughs> definitely isn't a pedophile. He's also very conniving and uh, masterful, uh, very tactful. Yes. Uh, this dude has set up so much shit. His entire existence is setting up stuff just so he can die. <laughs> and at this point, he has succeeded. And he's done it. Now everything, Lord English is here. Everything Doc Scratch has been doing this whole time has succeeded. Something he's been doing for multiple planets lifetimes Mm -hmm. has now all finally come to fruition and lord english is born not that anything else could have happened because lord english himself has also literally existed and been influencing events Mm -hmm. because he was already here that's that's what this is is that like our heroes have not won (laughs) think about what they've been doing think about what like what Cascade's triumph is their, their goal hasn't been to win the game They've for a really long time. They've succeeded in running away. Their goal has been survival. They have fled. They, they have run. Mm-hmm, That's what Cascade is. Whatever gets them to live is what they've been trying to chase. It's it's just it's such a perfect like backhand to the incredible high of Cascade mm-hmm. of just reminding you like what the overall situation oh, actually is like they we've escaped. just seen like you know <laughs> and it, what what for the kids is this monumental moment of triumph of we did it and then the immediate backhand of but it was all planned and none of it mattered anyway because lord hmm. english has arrived and he will destroy everything it's fucked it's fucked yeah there we go <laughs> we're all just some suckers man that's the end of act five <laughs> that's what we're ending on here now next week we're going to be reading through pages 4113 to 4390. One more time for the people in the back. 4113 to 4390. And what this means is, is we're, we're, for those of you that have read the comic, we're reading through Act 6, Act 1, and Act 6, Intermission 1. 
That's what we're reading through. I would like to take a moment to talk about how some of the discussion is going to change going forward. Okay. We have hit the halfway point, and mm-hmm. up until now, everything that we've read, we've been talking about it purely from a like narrative standpoint. We've talked about the meta of it a little bit, but mm-hmm. mostly just like the comic, right? This is going to change slightly as we head into Act 6, because this is where we start to get into some uh, fandom discourse, <laughs> because they are not the majority, but there is a sizable faction of people mm-hmm. who do think that, like, Homestuck is over at this point, and now it's just it's just bad, <laughs> right? That is a decent number of people, and while I think that's dumb, <laughs> yeah. Act 6 is a lot different than, than Acts 1 through 5 mm. in the way that it tends to get talked about. Because there's a lot more things in Act 6 that there's just conversation about being like, is that good? Why is that bad? What's going on here? Mm. So while I don't, I don't want to like poison your perception, I don't want you to go into Act 6 being like, well, this is the ah, bad this part. This is the worst right? one. Yeah, no. Yeah. But what I do want you is, is thinking more about how much this lines up on a quality level. Yeah. Not that I don't think you've been doing that thus far, but there's, 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 almost, there's just been, like, less reason to. Mm-hmm. Like, it's almost been, like, a given yeah. at this point that, like, yeah, everything that's happening is fucking sick. Yeah, like, no no part of it has been like, oh, man, why do they have to fucking talk about troll quadrants for so long? Yeah, <laughs> but, but going into Act 6, we're going to be having more discussions on things. Like, once we finish talking about them being, like, is this good? Like, why? Like, how do we feel about this from a quality level? Yeah, because we kind of have to. There's, there's, there's no real way to avoid it once we, once we get to X six. So, here's what we're gonna do. Yeah. When we reach a point that I think it is relevant and important to talk about, like a more meta fandom aspect of it, I would like to get your thoughts on that first. Okay. I, right. I want you to go through what you came away with first, because while I don't think it's like a bad thing if you end up changing your mind based on more information, I do think it will be interesting to see how you, as a new person, yeah. react to these more controversial elements of the story that have created a lot more like discourse of like, yo, why the fuck did they do that? Mm-hmm. I would like to see your reaction to that coming off of them with just the knowledge of the story as yeah. opposed to me who at this point has been poisoned by years and years of fandom and interaction fandom, it's impossible yeah. for me to look at these moments without that coming into effect yeah. and then i can kind of come in afterwards and talk about the more general large scale approach to it and then also my own thoughts on it yeah um because like i've said act six is half the comic yeah you can't sum up act six as like well that's bad or that's good Mm. There's bad and good stuff in Act 6. My favorite character is in Act 6. Mm. Hands down, right? He's my favorite boy. I love him dearly. Mm. Some of my least favorite shit is also in Act 6, and we'll yeah. get to that. So that's just going to be a part of the discussion moving forward because it, it kind of has to be. There's no yeah. way to avoid it at this mm-hmm. point. Um, the people who are watching want to hear about it. <laughs> yeah, they, I assume that you guys would also want to hear like ET's takes on on these on these things. But I, I feel like it's important to signpost this change going forward. Yeah, because like in like every aspect, in both in the story and like the art of the story and like the the tone of the story and and in the meta aspect of like the fandom ch- side of things, end of Act Five is very much a like signpost of mm-hmm. like. Okay, things are going to be different here, moving forward. Things are going to change now. Yeah. This is this is the line that like once we cross this line, pretty much until the end of all official material, we're going to be having to go through it and talk about like everything we've been doing up till now, and is this good from a critical level? Yeah. So there we go. Okay. I'm excited to talk about that. Don't get me wrong. I think that's going to be super fucking cool. It's going to add a mm. new dynamic to these episodes. Yeah. But worth pointing out for the listeners to kind of understand that change and then like how we're going to be viewing the show moving forward in the same way as you saw in this episode with like frame motifs there will be times where i'm going to pull back the curtain a little more liberally on spoilers Mm -hmm. to explain a critical fault where they pop up because sometimes it might not be clear but in the moment it's like it's like I think that that will better illustrate. I won't do anything insane. I'm not going to spoil like major 
plot shit. Mm. But like, if there is a failing that exacerbates the issue later, and I don't think it will ruin the reading experience to know about it, yeah. then I'm going to talk about it. Because yeah. I think it will make the discussion itself more interesting on the episode. Yeah. And I don't think it will compromise your reading experience at all as a first time through. Nice. There we go. <laughs> Sounds good. This uh, section, holy hell, man. It. I feel like, man, I've, every time we come here, I'm just like, God... I, I need to know what happens next. Like, this is so wild. You've you've given me all the bait, answered the questions from the past time, and given me more stuff to worry about now. What what could you do? <laughs> well, you're going to have to wait to find out for another 4,000 pages. <laughs> oh, man. All yeah. right, there we go. At the end of uh, Act 6, Act 5, Act 2, they'll be like, all right, now we got to go through the, fifth, the sixth wall and just... <laughs> <laughs> They just go to act, act seven is another like twenty seven sub acts. That's just, oh yeah, my no, god! It's the it's the other half of it's the other comic. It really is the never ending story. It just keeps going forever. More Halloween More walls. More act 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 acts. You can't get away from Lord English. Well, I'll keep trying. What about Lord Spanish. <laughs> ah. <laughs> This is Lord Spain. Oh, my God. Don't forget Lord French. <laughs> there we go. Oh, my goodness. What is that over there? I think it's, it's just a uh, funny little puppet man yeah, with like a cue ball for a weird head. Weird cue ball puppet looking thing. This, is that is, yours? It's not mine. I didn't leave him before. Oh, where'd you get that claw? Look at him quick. Look at him. Oh, shit. Oh, he's fucking. Oh, my God. He's getting that, so big. Gee, whoa. Oh, fuck. We should he's, leave. This oh, is he's bad. green and mean and green. And it's like. I, I hear this like, sound. I hear this sound like emanating from him. I, what is it? What is it saying? What is it saying? You should, you should join the Patreon and go into the Discord server. Is that? Did I hear that right? Did he just shill? Did was he? Is he oh, shilling our, our Patreon, Patreon and things in the description of the episode? Is it? Oh, yes, yes, I am. That's what I'm doing. It's, it's me, Lord English. I'm doing that. It's like, oh I guess, shit! I guess you were Thanks. always meant to do it. Cause Thanks, Lord English. Here. He's already shilling. <laughs> he's already telling. All us right, about well, it. hey, Lord English, you should chill. Join us next episode of the Grubcast. <laughs> the Grub Lord English is an in-studio guest. All right, <laughs> <laughs> the Grubcast. Grub